And we welcome you to Bobcat Stadium as we are live here in Salina, Texas. Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lowry as we are getting ready for the coin toss between these undefeated Anacayotes and these Salina Bobcats. And Nash, these two teams know each other so well. I mean, you can tell us more about their rivalry, but this is going to be a good one here tonight. Yes, sir, Josh. Anna is 2-0 and going to this game, and the Salina Bobcats are 3-0 and going into this game. One, One of their, their unbeaten, unbeaten streaks will end here tonight. You know, we talked about it's been two weeks since we've had Anna football on the air as they were idle last week. Salina, they were not idle. They were played in this stadium against Walnut Grove, and it was a wild one. They had to deal with an hour and a half, two hour lightning delay, a 38 35 victory for Salina. They had to play catch up all night long. And off last week, they're coming off a shutout win over Aubrey where the defense looked spectacular. Absolutely. That game was the ultimate experience for anybody looking to see just how dominant this Coyote team can be on both sides of the ball with the defense shutting them out and the offense putting up massive pass and rushing yards led by Zy Williams. The, the prayer, prayer is done. done. And now we await the Anna team intro. As they are to our left. Again, we are high up top the visitors of coaches box here at Bobcat Stadium. There's the purple smoke. Here comes Anna. so much attention on this contest tonight as Dave Campbell, Texas football, has Anna ranked number two in the state in all of 4A. And Solana, no notch to them, they're number five right now as far as the Dave Campbell, Texas football rankings go. This is going to be a fantastic matchup. We'll go ahead and let everybody get set up for the national anthem as we're back in just a moment for kickoff between Anna and Solana.
Back live once, once again from the Bobcat Stadium. Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lowry. Appreciate you bearing with us. Our first ever road broadcast here on a Coyote Vision. So we are making things work. Like I said, we are high atop the press box. Outdoor broadcast night. Picture perfect weather. We mentioned that earlier. 79 degrees will be your kickoff. No rain in sight. A little windy uh, coming out of what is essentially the south southwest, about 5 to 15 miles an hour. Really shouldn't have too much effect on these kickers and players here tonight. And we'll receive the ball as they go left to right. Solana in their orange uniforms. They will kick off right to left. First time this season, Anna sporting their road white uniforms. As for Solana, we will have Brayden Johnson kicking off the junior. And back to receive. Jay Mason Davis. Tensions are rising. Well, this is on TV. This is on Coyote Vision. Happy to be with you. And it's, it's going to be Sean Steens who takes it from about the 13-yard line, finds a bit of a gap, stays on his feet, still on his feet, and finally spun to the ground, 32-yard line. Sean Steens with some progress after it was a good kickoff by Brady Johnson. Here comes the end offense to work, led by quarterback Zyandre Williams. Zy Williams has been excellent in the past two games for Anna, really being the captain of this offensive ship they have out there. So the offense goes to work. We'll also see Edward Chumley out there as the running back. Anna, 2-0. and Salina, 3-0. and They played each other twice last season. And here we are in 2023 doing it once more. Steen's in motion to the right. Here's the snap. First play of the game for Zy Williams. And he'll find Steen's on a cross route. And he is brought down. Not at the line of scrimmage. No gain. It'll be second and ten. Steens is 129th career reception. We saw five receptions, 55 yards against Aubrey a couple weeks ago. Side throw here on second and 10. Chumley with a hit and a helmet to helmet collision. Big time tackle there. That's Colton Rodriguez for Salina. And once again, no gain. As Chumley with the catch. Chumley not backing down from this Bobcat defense. It seems to prove with Rodriguez having the past two tackles for Salina that he's going to be the main issue with the offense tonight. Chumley had four receptions against Aubrey two weeks ago. Delayed handoff. Chumley gets tripped up, and that's a big third down stop. Andrew Helbing, duo tight end and defensive tackle, Wrapped up, Chumley, a gain of just two. That forces fourth and seven. And Jamison Adams, the Coyote punter, out there a little earlier than he was hoping for. Well, although this drive, this first drive has been a quick four up, four down, this is the this is the talk of the town tonight. It almost seems like the entire city is here tonight. Both of these teams have seen each other three times in the past 12 months with Anna winning the past two matchups. And like we said in the pregame, both of these teams are undefeated leading into this season. Beautiful punt by Adams as it sailed through the south wind. Jameson Driver, essentially what would be a fair catch, caught it and simply just got on the ground. So now for the first time tonight, we will see the Salina Bobcat offense going to work. And this is a Salina team uh, that scored 40 against Paris in their season opener. And then they put up 77 against Bishop Lynch. That was a 77-41 game. That game was tied 35-35 at the half. And then, of course, last week scoring 38 points against Walnut Grove in a game that ended just just short of midnight after the lightning delay. This Salina Bobcats team has a strong two-headed monster with two running backs, Harrison Williams and Logan Gutierrez. Williams had 302 yards and three touchdowns against Bishop Lynch, and Logan Gutierrez in that same game had 254 yards and five touchdowns. The rushing game shows shades of the Chaparrales, which the Coyotes played two weeks ago. This is the defense that is going to go to work for 
and a tonight. As the quarterback, quick handoff. We've got a flag in the backfield. As Logan Gutierrez got loose, he stopped at the 31-yard line, and it appears to be a hold, and this ball is going to be coming back. Cervini, really good job at stopping that potential run because he could have gone all the way. He was the last line of defense. Great play by Cervini. Yeah, this is a, you mentioned the running back duo, Harrison Williams, Logan Gutierrez. They essentially switch off series. You saw Gutierrez get free, but there was a hold. That brings it back. So now it's going to be a long first and 20 as the ball is spotted back at the six-yard line. Starting off at the 94-yard drive, ought to tire them out. Knox Porter, the quarterback, hands it off to Gutierrez once again. Finds some space. Now, that ball did come loose late. Was he on the ground? And they're going to say he was. He is down right at the 15-yard line. Cervini with back-to-back -back tackles even forced the ball out of the hands of the Bobcats right there. Very good play. So... 12-yard gain to make it second and eight. Stacking left side heavy. A bit of wildcat offense here. Another handoff to the running back, and everybody is wrapped up. That was Knox Porter out there, the quarterback. Pardon me. So now a third and five. As you see, Kyle defense and sub some changes. As the entire front line essentially. See names like out. Jabari Finney and Cash Williams coming onto the field. And they're going to have to hurry. Alex Martinez just got his helmet on. There's the snap. Porter is going to run to his right, throwing, and it's incomplete, just out of the hands. Of the receiver, it's Ira Nickel, I believe. And we've got a late flag. Pass by Porter was a little behind the receiver. Oh, well, it's on Anna. Referee might cut it out. Now, this is enough to be a first down. And it will be. So unfortunate. It's one thing that's been a somewhat of an issue for Anna in a very early timeout called by Seth Parr. 18th penalty of the year for the Coyotes. As we're just barely getting the third game of the year started. Seems that this... And a Coyote defense is really discombobulated at the beginning of the game. You saw in that last play, some of our some of our guys were just barely getting their helmet on, and it really, really unfortunate miscommunication on that, which we would have hold, held them on fourth down, but with that penalty got them the first down. So first time out called by Anna here in this first half. And early in this first quarter with 8.27 to go, no score. As the Salina offense returns. So first and ten, Porter immediate throw to his right, and the pass is caught. That's Jacob Henry, the senior. So a gain of six, it'll be second and four. Clock ticking here in the first quarter, no score. And here's that quick slot of offense, hand off to Gutierrez, and he gets through a few tacklers, and he's finally brought down by Jamison Adams. That'll be good enough for a first down on a gain of about eight. These Salina running backs are really showing shades of Ezekiel Elliott, really willing to break any tackle just to get any sort of extra yardage. Porter throwing to the right side, and the pass incomplete. As a nice job there. Yeah, Kalen Brown able to get in there and force the receiver to lose the ball. Ball was thrown a little bit high by Porter. 
but scorpioned him in a way, knocked the ball out. That was set up second and 10. Ball at the 38-yard line, Porter handoff. And finally brought down at the 41-yard line, Gutierrez once again. It's a really smart play by Grant Cervini on that play. He was guarding number two, Colton Rodriguez. Rodriguez went in motion toward the right side. Cervini knew it was a bluff and stayed on the right side of that field and was there to make the tackle. Third and seven, Porter gets the call from his head coach, Bill Elliott. And we'll see what the Bobcats draw up. Third and long for Solana. Big moment here for Anna. Snap. Porter is going to be brought down. C.J. Miller. Miller. 15th tackle by himself. And it's his first sack of the year. And for Anna, that's sack number five on the season. Miller, really aggressive pass rush in there to force that sack and the fourth down. That'll put us and put the Salina Bobcats special teams out there. Brady Johnson just gets the punt away. Jamar Finney is back to receive. He will take it from the 24-yard line and weaving his way through all sorts of traffic. He is brought down at the 32-yard line by Ryan Reese, the line, the senior linebacker for Salina. Okay, for the Anna off and Anna defense there, you let up a first down or two, but you're able to stop them in their territory. And now you've given your offense the ball back. 0-0 ball game, 628 to go in the first. And great fashion too with CJ Miller having that amazing sack and Finney having that great scorpion tackle to stop them in their tracks. Brings up the Anna offense and Zy Williams. Try and put some points on the board. So here we go once again for Zai Williams trying to get something going. Second possession immediately passed caught by Ronald Bell, who was the hero two weeks ago with 213 yards receiving and also three touchdowns. As him and Steams have really been the stars for this Anna offense. So immediately a first down as we wait for the chain game to reset. Ball spotted. Right at the 45 yard line. Ronald Bell has really proved himself as a strong wide receiver, too, behind scenes, and even a running back from time to time with Chumley. Handoff here to Chumley. Oh, pardon me, it's going to be Zion Williams to take it himself. He fooled everybody, and he's finally brought out of bounds by Tyler Vincent. Excellent run for Zion Williams. Two plays for the in offense, two first downs. Ronald Bell with a very crucial block that allowed Zion to get those extra yardage and the first down. And a band playing just to our left. We're high atop the visitors' coaches' box here at Bobcat Stadium. Zai Williams with a snap, first and ten, looking deep. And he'll finally throw it up the middle. Very dangerous pass, but it's caught. Sean Steens looked like he had it one-handed in his right, just cradling it with his right hand. And that's going to make it second and one gain of nine. Totally mossed, like cookies in the cookie jar when you're laid up night, laid up at night. Playing video games. Wow, he grabbed that. Right, folks, this is our first road game. Sadly, we do not have replays available tonight on our broadcast. But how about that second and one? Already a highlight catch. Now Zai Williams drops back on the second and one. Throw up the middle, and it pops out of the hands of Chumley. That ball hung in the air for a minute, but the Bobcats unable to grab it. Now third and one. And we'll see what Anna draws up. On the short down. Saw the Bobcat defense decide to blitz an extra few guys, which caused Zai to succumb to the pressure and try and throw a quick pass to Chumley just to get him that one yard. Bring up third and one here. We saw Chumley, four carries, 23 yards against the Chaparrales, and we mentioned earlier four receptions two weeks ago. George Rogers there on his right. And Bell is in motion. Fake the handoff there. Going deep and overthrown as Zai Williams was looking for Aiden Palmer. And that's going to be a fourth and one. Now, this is an Anna team that you and I know very well, not afraid to go for it on fourth down. Absolutely. Their fourth down offense is very, very creative, proving time and time again that it can truly be successful. They've gone seven of ten this season with fourth down. Well, it's going to get a little bit more difficult as there was a flag thrown, and that's going to make it third 
It was an ineligible receiver downfield. That'll make it third and seven, but the offense stays on the field. So already two penalties for Anna in this game. Zy Williams, oh, pardon me, third and six, so it resets. Pass caught, Chumley to the ground. That'll be enough for a first down as he escapes to the 27-yard line. Salina Bobcat defense spread out their spread out their defense in the zone, and Chumley went and found the soft spot for the first down. That's interesting by Salina. Would you have stayed with the fourth and one, and you put them back at third and six, and they still get the first down? So now first and ten, right at the 30-yard line. Zai Williams with a snap, uses a block, and he is on the run, still going. He's brought down at the 28-yard line, gain of two. Amazing block by Jesse Vasquez, the junior, to. Let Zai get some extra yardage there. Now set up on the right hash mark, three yards away from red zone territory on a second and four. 407, left to go, no score. Williams going to the right, Bell with it using the screen. He'll be brought down at the 15 yard line. Good enough for a gain of about eight, and that is good enough for a first down. Big fella screeners right there, Lane White and Zach Roberson there to help him out. This is a very experienced front line for Seth Parr's offense. First and 10, ball to 15. Williams looking to the left, fade into the end zone, caught! Brett Poole over the shoulder! Touchdown, Anna Coyotes! Do not sleep on Brett Poole, he is like that. Fifth reception of the year for Poole, his second touchdown. And Anna with the early lead, 3.37 to go in the first. It is 6 nothing. as it'll be Michael Hinkley out there for the extra point attempt. Defenses can really get caught up with Sean Steens and the gravity that he brings, leaving Brett Poole for open fade routes like that a great, great option for the Anna offense. Kick is good. Anna with a 7 Oh, lead on Solana here at Bobcat Stadium. And Brett Poole. Talked a lot about him all year long in the purple and white scrimmage. He really came to life. A little bit quiet against Decatur. Three catches. And Aubrey just one reception. As we'll go ahead and thank some of our uh, sponsors here on uh, Coyote Vision. Hutchins of Plumbing in AC. Get it done right, right now. Well, we're talking about Brett Poole making an impact. That's one way to make an impact early against, you know, what is arguably your biggest rival for Anna, the Salina Bobcats. Absolutely. Really nailed it on the head right there. And offense returns, or pardon me, kickoff team returns. 3.37 to go, 7-0 lead. Seems like that's been a theme for this Anna offense so far through the three games. That first possession, just trying to test the waters and being conservative. Then when you've kind of seen what the defense will give you, then you're going after it. Zy Williams once again confident in his throws. He's got a confident receiver, Brett Poole, there to make the catch in the end zone. Here's the kickoff by Camden Schlitt to Salina. Fielded by Knox Porter, the quarterback, actually. And he'll be brought down at the 32-yard line. No, pardon me, that was Jacob Henry. First road game of the year for Anna. 2-0 on the season. They certainly got the jitters out with this first drive. Like you said, really their first drive is about scouting and learning the defense more than just trying to take it to the cup immediately. They gave the defense some time, and then the offense went back with a long drive that resulted in a 7-0 lead. Now the defense going back to our Porter going back. He is being chased out of the pocket. He will throw it away. Excellent pressure by Nathan Nickerson for Anna. Senior end. Jameson Adams there as well. That was set up second and ten. Porter 
handoff and stopped immediately and will be brought back and thrown to the ground too much Harrison Williams the running back and Anna's defense we've told you there's a lot of bad blood between these two teams but that's making a statement, but that's too much of a statement. You just need to put a period at the end of that sentence. Instead, they put an exclamation point. That's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct. That'll be a free first down for Salina. Suppose so. Greer really took it personally that he did not go down. A lot of yardage almost brings them within Coyote territory here. Third penalty tonight already against Anna. The box set up in a goal line position. Going to be a shove here. Oh, a rare non-shotgun snap, and they'll hand off to Gutierrez. And, and he continues to stumble forward. That'll be a first down. Well, this is a decent answer from Salina after the drive down that saw the Brett Poole uh, touchdown. But now, now the running game starting to show off, show it flex its muscles. And Harrison's or pardon me, Gutierrez is going to be wrapped up. Gutierrez seems to be very, very shifty whenever he has blockers in front of him. Really able to read the holes, almost like the tractor scene in the first cars. Lightning McQueen really able to shift in between the other players. Knox Porter back. So second and ten. Ball is on the 13. Snap, and here's the run by. Harrison Williams, and a short gain. And so he'll get to the nine-yard line, now third and six. I almost wonder in a matchup like this, if this is fourth down territory right here for the Bobcats. The first down marker is at the two-yard line, by the way. But they might honestly just look right past it and go for gold. See Cervini set up on the left guarding at Jacob Henry. Gutierrez is the running back. They won't hand it off to him. Porter is on the run. Porter throws to the end zone. That ball is incomplete. Near side field judge said incomplete as they tried to give it to Jacob Henry. It's Jacob Henry. So that sets up fourth and six. And a lot of the offense going off, that'll bring on the, the kicking team to make a layup here. Braden Johnson, the ball is on the nine. 26-yard field goal attempt, and it appears we're going to have a timeout. Timeout to Anna, so they'll use their second timeout so far as we're still on the fourth and six.
Texas Bank, proudly serving Texas communities for 50 years. 7-0 Bobcats, 19 seconds left to go in this first quarter here at Bobcat Stadium, but already Seth Parr having to use two timeouts as now Salina's field goal unit is out there. I have to wonder why that timeout was taken whenever it's a just a 26-yard field goal coming up here. Maybe they're getting a rundown for the second quarter. You always ahead. check out the personnel in case there is going to be some trickery here. Here we go. Solana trying to get on the board. Here's a snap. Kick is up. And it's good. Solana on the board with the field goal. By Braden Johnson. Well, now as you analyze that drive by Salina, they were able to get the running game going, but they were not able to punch it into the end zone. That drive nearly 70 yards. Bits and pieces coupled with some long runs and incomplete passes ultimately led to the field goal. Anna still holding on to a four-point lead. Very comfortable, not within field goal range, and they have a very nice, very nice second quarter coming up ahead. Well, for Efren Ramos... Defense, you've got to think that is a win when it comes down to any time you're able to have the other team go on a long drive over 70 yards, including that unsportsmanlike penalty, it would stop them at the nine-yard line, force three points. I think you'll take that against this high-flying Salina offense. You've got to give both these fans credit. This place is a packed, and Anna just some 30 minutes away. They have really showed up. Everybody's wearing purple tonight, cheering on at the Coyotes. Purple and white, two colors, or excuse me, purple and orange, two colors that mesh really well together, although these fans do not mesh together. The beautiful night sky showing a great hue of orange and purple tonight. Kick off by Braden Johnson, and Steens lets it go. It bounces into the end zone, and that will be a touchback for the Anna offense. 15 seconds left to go in the uh, first quarter, 7-3, to three. Anna leads. Anna ranked number two by Dave Campbell, Texas football. Solana ranked number five. Truly a game for both the sports heads and the football families here. Seth Parr's offense comes to the field for the third time tonight. We'll see what Zy Williams is coming off a four-touchdown game against Aubrey. See what he can draw up here. Quarterback draw, gets through two tackles, and then he is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Colton Rodriguez making the tackle on Zy Williams. That'll be a loss of two. And that'll be the end of the quarter. Here at Bobcat Stadium, Anna with a 7-3 lead as we head to the second quarter when we come back. Steel Fab Inc. Continuous improvement. Hutchins Plumbing and Air Conditioning. Get it done right, right now. Come visit Freedom Flex Car Wash, and as veteran and first responder-owned facility where cleanliness, care, and customer experience is their mission. Texas Bank, proudly serving Texas communities for 50 years. ER at Anna, a service of Texoma Medical Center. Magnet Realty, providing you with a magnetic real estate experience. Your locally owned and operated real estate brokerage. Adon Complete Air Conditioning and Heating, your high efficiency experts. Quick Car Lube and Auto Care. We're committed to auto repair and to serving you with quality and value. And we welcome you back to the start of the second quarter with Anna, a 7-3 lead on these Solana Bobcats. So we'll switch into the field. And now Anna, wearing their white uniforms for the first time this season, 
will start their drive going right to left. Williams with the snap, throw to the right side, caught by Steens. Little stutter step and able to force his way up to about the 33-yard line. And a gain of about, about six yards, about, about eight yards, so make it third and four. Let's make sure everybody where they needs to be. Bell and Aiden Palmer are moving to the right side for Williams. Chumley is in the backfield. Steens in low coverage on the left. Plenty of time on the play clock. Here's a snap, handoff. Chumley, he's got room. He's got lots of space. He's at the 50, and then he is broken up at the 45-yard line. Big time carry for Edward Chumley. Trumley saw the open on the left side of the field before he was ultimately got by Colton Rodriguez. Strong run by Trumley. Zai Williams on the first and 10 now, another handoff to Trumley, and he will fall forward to about the 42 yard line. Forward progress, about a gain of four for Trumley. We've seen Chumley take a little bit more of a back seat in these past two games with George Rogers and Ronald Bell really taking up most of the running reps. It's nice to see him get some excellent progress here tonight. Chumley comes into the contest tonight, 50 career carries. So far, he's been definitely a part of the game plan here tonight. Williams drops back second and seven. Williams going deep and over the head of Ronald Bell as he would cut, was covered closely by Tyler Vincent. So incomplete pass for Zai Williams. Saying number 80, Eric Bowen being incorporated into this, this particular drive here. New face on the land with Poole set up on the left side. Third and seven. This has not been a down that's been friendly to this and offense. All season long, just 26% conversion rate this season going into this game. But they'll add one here, Chumley with the reception, and then finally knocked out of bounds as he continued to stomp forward on this Bobcat defense as he gets down to the 24-yard line. It doesn't matter what down it is, and that's the bottom line because the Coyotes said so. So big-time third down conversion. So now first and ten. Clock stops, 10-10 to go here in the second quarter. Three wide receivers to the right, Sean Steens to the left, Chumley is the running back. Williams drops back, throw up the middle, Steens caught it, and then he's quickly wrapped up by Colton Rodriguez. Gain of two, forward progress given to Steens. Rodriguez really taking the bulk of the load here for the Bobcat defense. Making tackles, applying pressure, really doing it all out there. Third year head coach, Seth Parr. Trying to get something else going here for his and offense. Second and eight. Williams on the right side, caught by Bell. And he's quickly wrapped up right at the 19 yard line and now set up third down. Second catch for Bell tonight. Third and three with a lot of the left side of the field being able to be used. You see Cash Williams coming onto the field right now. We can expect he's been in there to provide a lot of crucial blocks this season, especially whenever it comes to the run game. Cash Williams is in there. We've seen this a few times. He's lined up on the right side. Quick handoff to Chumley. Chumley escaping forward, and the forward progress should give him a first down here as he is stopped just shy of the 14-yard line. First down. Another carry for Chumley. Cash Williams so valuable providing that amazing block right on that down marker that gave Chumley just that extra bit of wiggle room to set us up with the first down in red zone territory. Set up on the 15-yard line. First and 10, and Mr. Brett Poole has entered the ball game for Anna. He's on the distant left side. Ball was on the right hash mark. First and 10. 
The ball was on the 14-yard line. Boys, See that man. Looking, pass, caught, into the end zone. Touchdown, Eric Bowen and the Coyotes. Their second touchdown of the night. Although it's been Sean Steens and Ronald Bell providing a great one-two punch on the receiving end, you see Brett Poole and Eric Bowen rising up in the clutch for the Anna offense, giving us a what would be a 14-3 lead coming up here. Hinkley in for the point after attempt. And it's good. Anna 14. Salina 3. On the Bowen touchdown up the middle. And folks, we want to thank Aon Complete Air Conditioning and uh, Heating, your high efficiency experts. Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lauer, 8 10 to go. On a beautiful night here in Salina, Texas, watching some great 4A Division I Texas high school football, and right now, Anna with a 14-3 lead. Yes, that drive was very long and grueling, but the run game really proved valuable to us, and so did Eric Bowen getting that nice touchdown there. We're just getting started. Yeah, we are. By my count, which is going to be a very rough estimate here, Zy Williams is 9 for 11 with a touchdown, with two touchdowns, actually. Brett Poole, and now his teammate Eric Bowen. And Bowen just made one catch against Aubrey two weeks ago for five yards. Just his second catch of the season. It goes for a touchdown and six points. Here's the return for Solana turning up the field and taking a hit out of bounds on a big collision. That's Bo Bentley, the sophomore. And Solana gets the ball. At the 37 at yard line. Well, with, what, to go in the second with what we're going on with that previous game and with this game, it seems that Eric Bowen is proving is that one catch is all he needs to be effective on the field. First and 10, so spotted at the 35, as you said. So now the Salina offense back toward Knox toward the quarterback. It's Logan Gutierrez, the running back out there. So the Anna defense back to work. Handoff Gutierrez finds a hole, gets through two tackles, and he's off to the races now. He's in Anna territory, but finally, flag thrown. Abram Greer wraps him up. Might be a face mask, but Gutierrez off to the races. Gutierrez is shifty, but... Didn't have the Jets to outrun Abram Greer, the big fella. Abram Greer, really a dual-bladed knife. Great on the defensive side and can provide very great runs whenever he steps in for the offense as a fullback sort of role. Yep, it's a face mask on Greer. So that is going to give Salina more yardage as they'll move that up to the 20, pardon me, the 17-yard line with Solana trailing 14-3. to Well, we've seen this Anna defense be faced with a major penalty like that with a face mask now and an unsportsman like last time, and they held them to just a field goal. We'll see if they can replicate that again. Hand off to Gutierrez, running to the right side. He is wrapped up. He is thrown to the ground by Grayson Stewart. Set up second and nine, so just a gain of one there. Already one red zone stop for the Anna offense tonight. And we've got a flag immediately thrown. And a little bit of shoving there by Willie Boyd for Anna. See what the officials rule. Looks like there was some extra contact with number 78, Ty Hughes. Well, holding is going to be the call, and that backs up the Solana offense. So now a long second and 17. 
So Anna gave him the face mask. They couldn't do anything with it. Now Salina is giving this defense the holding call. And we'll see. This will be a second and 17 they opt for now. Porter and shotgun. Gutierrez is to his left. He's going to drop back to throw. Headed for the end zone. And it's over the shoulder. Lots of contact. No flags. Third down for Salina. Excellent coverage. Kalen Brown for Anna, the senior. Brown just got caught up on the inside of Henry. His, his contact was not intentional. Henry was just simply running as close to Brown as he could have, trying to get that flag. But Kalen Brown, very, very disciplined cornerback here. Third and 17. The first down would be spotted at about the uh, six-yard line. Five wide receiver set immediately thrown to the left side. Pass is caught by Gutierrez. Jamison Adams is there immediately to wrap up Gutierrez along with Cash Williams. A whole slew of names on that tackle. Great job, fellas, bringing up the fourth and 18. Pending what happens on this down, what could happen on the other side of the field, Nash? Salina got the nine-yard line, and able to stop them, force a field goal kick, and now on a semi-windy night, wind down the field is not too bad. Here comes a distant field goal for a Braden Johnson. This field goal is a lot different. The other one was just a 20-yarder. This one is upwards of 40. Oh! It's blocked! Jaden Mason Davis has it! He's off to the races! Wow. He's in the end zone! Touchdown, Anna Coyotes! The hype is real! Amazing! Special teams scores a touchdown. There's a flag at the end of this, but this will stand. Big time block! I think, I think it was, was Finney who got a piece of it. And then the ball picked up by Jane Mason Davis, and he takes it all the way back from the, about the 30-yard line for the score. Oh. Unsportsmanlike conduct is the call. The touchdown counts. Wow. Both Mason Davis and Finney getting in on that left side of the weak Salina Bobcat special teams, able to break through those barriers, block that field goal, and take, take it, it all the way, way to the, the cup. cup. Michael Hinckley in for the extra point. As now Bill Elliott, the Salina head coach, would like an explanation. And we have seen some electrifying moments from this defense for Anna so far this season. And just... Knocks that one. We'll be seeing that play for a while. Definitely. That will be in all the highlight packages for the rest of this year. Maybe even the rest of this century. That's how great it was. Hinkley misses the extra point. But the score, 22-3. That's Hinkley's first missed PAT of the season. Folks, come visit Freedom Flex Car Wash, Anna's veteran and first responder-owned facility when cleanliness, care, and customer experience is their mission. I want to thank Freedom Flex Car Wash for coming along this season, sponsoring Coyote Vision. Well, 20 to 3, Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lowry. There's nowhere to sit up here on this coach's press box, but why would you sit down when you see special team plays like that for Anna? Totally. Wow. The, the only, only thing, thing that's, that's really dragging, dragging them down in this first half has been the penalties and just making those drives a little bit harder with that unsportsman like we saw and the face mask. But the end of defense proving that it doesn't matter. Both of those plays ended up resulting in a stop on the Salina Bobcats with them getting a field goal the first time and us blocking a field goal the second time. You mentioned already five penalties in this first half for the Anna Coyotes. But right now, they've got the 20-3 lead. 
You get a blocked field goal, that already flips the script. But you turn that into a touchdown, that really flips the script. That's a, essentially a 14-point swing, what we just saw. So now this kickoff being taken from the, the 25 here, an extra long one. Kick by Camden Schlick, as it will be Bo Bentley to return it right side of the field. He's got some space. He's across midfield. He's got one man to beat. He does. Bentley headed to the end zone. Finney is unable to stop him. And Salina answers right back on the kickoff return touchdown by Bo Bentley. Not unsportsmanlike in the previous play, proving to be a big factor with just that 10 yards extra of a kickoff right there by Schlitt, you would think it really doesn't affect it because a lot of the times we see either a touchback or just a 10-yard return. But if you give them 10 yards of wiggle room, bad, bad things can happen. So special teams making plays on both sides. As now Salina sets up for the extra point attempt. It's a 20-9 score with 5.32 to go. As we'll see the kicker, Braden Johnson, in there for the extra point attempt. The holder is Luke Gianni, and that's blocked! Are you kidding me? Abram Greer was there, held up his gloves. Says and no, he knocks no, it no. away. <laughs> Extra point missed or failed, as you'd say. 20 to 9 is going to be the score. We certainly what well, you, you can't write this <laughs> nearly at all. We yeah. certainly know what the Bobcats are gonna be talking about during halftime. That's two back to back field goal setups with that PAT and then a field goal on this side that were thwarted by the Anna special teams. Somebody's got to stop Abram Greer on that line. Somebody's got to stop Jabari Finney as well. It appeared that Finney was the one that had his hands initially on the blocked field goal moments ago that resulted in a touchdown for Anna. From the top of my head, it's a very, very short list of people who can stop Abram Greer. No one has proved it's possible yet. And a 2-0 and oh yeah, Greer, on the season. Greer really has done it everywhere because we saw him score a touchdown in the opener against Decatur. We've seen him make some big defensive plays so far. Remember the Decatur game? He uh, intercepted the pass on a two, on a two-point conversion attempt, end up taking two points the other way for the Coyotes. That was against the Eagles week number one in the Anna 37-30 win against Decatur. Nearly a 90-yard two-point conversion there so here's the kickoff steens lets it go again that'll bounce in the end zone it's not everybody catches their breath 532 to go in the second quarter Anna with a 20 to 9 lead on salina but so far we know there we've talked about it before a lot of folks in the state of texas watching this contest here tonight so far it's lived up to every bit of it Zai Williams' is offense returns to the field. Already a pair of touchdowns for Zai, and his defense helping him out as well. What will this possession give us? Williams thrown, pass caught by Poole, stops, stutters, gets through one defender, and then he's shoved out of bounds. Some extra yardage gained there by Brett Poole. As they'll mark the first down at the 43-yard line. We really have Allen Iverson out there in our receiving core. Excellent almost crossover from Poole right there. Chumley to Williams is right. Pass, a little high. Steen's caught it, and he's now headed 
past the 40, past the 30. He's got one man to beat. Bell doing his best to block, and Steen's brought down at the 16-yard line, and Sean Steen's showing off some moves there. Two Bobcats in coverage right on Steen's there. He's shifted right through them like it was Black Friday, and he's trying to get a TV. Wow, what a move. Back-to-back -back moves by Poole and Steen's right there. This and offense is quickly headed down the field, leading 20 to 9. Clock stop, 513. Ball is on the 16 yard line. A lot of wiggle room here on this left side. See Aiden Palmer set up over there. Williams handoff to Chumley. Runs into a pair of Bobcats. He is brought down. Gain of about two yards for Chumley. That'll be Cooper Farrow, the running back slash left back and senior on that tackle. Personnel changes. Brett Poole, Eric Bowen return the wideouts. Cash Williams exits the field. Ronald Bell and Sean Steens to the right for Williams. George Rogers is back in the game to Williams' left. Second and eight for Anna. And whistle. Are we going to get a timeout here? Timeout called by the Bobcats. Actually, oh. they call it. It's Aunt Seth Parr wow. called the timeout. And that is the final timeout for Anna in this first half. 20-9 to nine the score, 440 to go. If you're just joining us, rivalry game, third meeting between these two teams in 12 months. This series history is... You know, some of the Anna students did a fantastic documentary on these two teams a year ago about the history of these two teams. And, you know, it had been some 50 years since Anna had beaten Salina in this series. They didn't play every year, but the records that we had, there was a stretch that Anna from 1972 to current times went 0-15 against Salina. That all changed last year with the home win, 28-25 back at Coyote Stadium, and then the Crazy playoff win here, 27-24. And in control. So we're back underway. Williams with the snap on second and eight. He's going to take it himself, and he is brought down at the 11-yard line. As he pops right back up. As the tackle made by Carter Lorick. So first and goal now. This is an Anna team that has been very efficient in the red zone this season, over 80% converting. And now, with the clock ticking, 4.05 to go. First and goal at the six. We've got Bill, Steens, and Bowen set up on the right side, pull on the left. Hand off to Rogers. He's wrapped up quickly. He'll gain about a yard and a half as both ends for Salina converged quickly. They saw it, and the tackle made by Evan Guerrero. Chumley is in to replace Rogers. And Zy Williams heads back to Seth Parr to get the play call. I don't think Anna's going to be in any hurry here. Play clock is at 13. The clock is taking 3.27 to go. Second and goal, Anna at the five. Now Chumley's back in. Crucial block by Chumley right there. Williams looking to the end zone. Eaton Bell, he caught it still, but was he in bounds? No, he was out. It'll be incomplete. Pass was broken up in the end zone. I think it was Colton Rodriguez who got a hand on it. Bell still made the catch anyway, but he was already out of bounds, incomplete. Wow, that play happened in slow motion. It's like that ball was up there infinitely before it came down. That's exciting. Now it'll bring a third and five as we see Greer come onto the field as well as Brandon Green. A pair of defensive stars for Anna. This is a big one here, third and five. On no the third and goal. Oh. Whistle, movement, and it appears this is going to back Anna up. 
That's going to be the false start. So another penalty by Anna. And so the third and goal, the ball spotted just in front of the 10-yard line. That was looking to be an excellent play as you see that trio come off of the field and they'll have to go for a more of a, a pass play. There were no running backs set up on that previous play. It was just Zy back there ready to receive all those great blocks. I guess we'll have to save it for another rainy day. Third and 10 on the third and goal. Williams looks to the end zone and the pass it's caught by Bowen, but he's about a yard short up the middle. Oh, no, it was incomplete. Pardon me. It looked like he had it there for a moment. Certainly came down with it. Yeah, pass is going to be incomplete. So fourth and goal at the 10. Camden Schlick is out there. And he's going to be the one to attempt the field goal. This one about 27-yarder. Kick up, and it twists in there. It's good. First field goal of the year for Anna, and it's Camden Schlick who connects at the 27-yarder. So Anna able to add points on the trip to the end zone to make it 23-9 with 2.49 to go in this first half. Got to give Salina their props right there. They really didn't allow for... A lot of great yardage. That that drive was just bits and pieces. I think we saw many third downs on that one, and ultimately that false start, which had to bring us back. Great, great hold by the Bobcat defense there. However, we still come out with points, giving us a 23-9 lead. You always want to get points when you take a trip to the red zone. Mm -hmm. That's what Anna did there. They'll be back to kick off. Salina back to receive the kick. Logan Gutierrez and Bo Bentley, who has a kickoff touchdown in this game, the only Salina touchdown so far. Don't kick back it to his well. side. <laughs> Camden Schlick with the kickoff. Another good one. Fair catch by Bentley. Waves it so out. So move the ball to the 20-yard line, 25-yard line, pardon me. It's one of the rule changes. You have a fair catch inside the 20. Ball spotted immediately at the 25. This Salina drive is going to be very, very eye-opening. They have the... They have all three of their timeouts starting at just where the touchback would be. A lot of time on the clock. See if they'll be able to put it to good use and if our defense will be able to stop them. Porter, handoff. That's Harrison Williams, and he is wrapped up. Well, careful now. Willie Boyd, who's already been in a few shoving matches here tonight. He fella. makes the tackle. <laughs> nice job for Willie Boyd. He had ten tackles. He's got 10 tackles on the season. He had four of them against Aubrey a couple weeks ago. Another handoff by Porter. Williams wrapped up quickly. C.J. Miller, big-time tackle, and it goes for a loss of yards. Sliced right through the play right there. Gosh. That's a third down and seven. Props to Willie Boyd and C.J. Miller for those tackles. Big time play here for the defense. Third and seven. Clock is ticking. Porter dropping back. He is going deep. Pass just out of the reach of Jacob Henry. As it was Jabari Finney applying pressure. And a big stop on third down for this Coyote defense. And it's fourth and seven, 142 on the clock. Jabari Finney, the senior, very, very disciplined cornerback, able to read the route that Henry was, run Henry was running right there. 
option for pass interference as he stays down there ready to receive this punt. That punt nearly blocked. I saw and that. Finney's going to play it. He's already passed the 50, and then he's dragged out of bounds on the Salina side of the field at the We'll mark him at the 47-yard line. Now, 133 to go, and with a 23-9 lead, there's some time on this clock to maybe add a couple more points before we hit the 27-minute halftime break. In their territory as well, and we have no timeouts remaining, so we'll really need to pull the deep bag of our two-minute drill out, some strong out routes toward the outside of the field, stopping this clock. It's going to be very, very, very good. Williams, shotgun formation, pass up the middle. Steens bobbled in and is nearly picked off as Luke Bigiani had a hand on it, but it rolled away from him. It'll be an incomplete pass. That would have been a gain of just about 11 if he came down with that right there. It does stop the clock, 128 left to go. That's a plus. Chumley's the running back, four wide receivers for Williams. Somebody will take it, run to the left side. It'll be brought down the 44-yard line. And a whistle and a flag. We've got a false start on Anna. So all we know, it's a false start. Not sure who moved there. So that, well. Still in their territory, but we're basically starting two yards away from where we started on first down. we got to face a third and 12 now. Williams, lots of pressure. He had to get rid of that ball, and that's a smart play to do as he had three Bobcats chasing after him. Ben Thomas, one of the defensive players going after him. They're going to stay out there, I guess, get a put this fourth down offense, see if they can go long. Well, there's 46 seconds left. The play clock is running. The offense is going to stay on the field here. This is interesting. Williams going back on the fourth down. He'll Throw to Steens, caught at the 40, and forcing his way in. He is right at the first down marker at the 36-yard line, and that's a first down. Clock is running and is out of timeout, so now they're in hurry up. What a catch for Steens, and what a way to get the first down fighting his way through. Here's a quick snap. Williams with some space running to his right. They've got a flag in the backfield. Chumley with the catch. He'll be brought down. We've got a flag back at the 43-yard line. Yeah, Williams had no one. Williams had no one really with him, so it'll be a holding call on Anna there. So 10-yard penalty, and that'll bring back Anna, almost to where they had the long fourth-down conversion. So it'll be first and 10, 22 seconds left. But Anna still going for it here. And why not? Williams, pass, caught by Poole, and he'll get out of bounds. 16 seconds on the clock. Brett Poole, veteran play to get out there, stop the clock. He is replaced by Aiden Palmer. Sixteen seconds, second and thirteen. Still would be a very distant field goal kick. Here's a pass, and just out of the reach of Sean Steens on the down and out. Twelve seconds to make it third and thirteen. Liking this and the pressure, though. They're not going to take this lead into halftime. They want more. Definitely. Still hungry. The ever-hungry Anna Coyotes. We love that mentality. Williams gets the play call from Seth Parr, his head coach. It's 
So 12 seconds to go. Here's the snap. Third and 13. Williams is going to take it himself. And still spinning around. Now switches directions completely, and then he is wrapped up by Colton Rodriguez. That expires the half. So a stop for the Solana defense ends the half. But what a first half for Anna as they have a 23-9 lead in what has been a very fun game to watch here at Bobcat Stadium. We'll take a break. Halftime here in Solana with the Bobcats leading, or pardon me, with the Coyotes leading the Bobcats. Now through September, when you replace your existing system with a Goodman Complete System from Hutchins Plumbing and Air Conditioning, we'll replace your existing gas or electric water heater for free. That's right, free. You'll also receive a 10-year limited manufacturer's warranty on parts and a Hutchins 10-year labor warranty on your new system and water heater. This deal has been extended for one more month. Don't miss out. Call or go online today. For 50 years, Texas Bank has helped families and businesses across our state. Whether you're opening a new totally free checking account or building your dream home, our Texas Bank family is excited to help you meet your goals. Come see our friendly staff in Anna and let us share our excitement with you about the next 50 years. Time to call Adon Complete. Our experienced techs come with a fully stocked truck, ready to help. If we don't have it in the truck, we can get it to your home within the hour. Every job reflects our name, and that's why we back our work with our one-year warranty. Cool off with Adon Complete Air Conditioning and Heating.
And welcome back to Bobcat Stadium. Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lowry. And what a, what a first half that was. Nash, and Anna's all coming to life. We really just had one misstep on special teams, but Anna currently with the 20, uh, 23-9 score. I had to check myself uh, there at the end. But pretty good so far from this offense. Yeah, although penalties have drug us down a little bit with, I think, six coming in this first half, it really hasn't provided – a really big barrier between us and getting into the red zone. Uh, Zy Williams has been very, very unparticular. He's targeted four different receivers three times in this first half, and you have names like C.J. Miller, Grayson Stewart, and Abram Greer, who have been doing excellent on the defensive end for us. Well, Zai, 17 of 24. This is the most completions and most pass attempts he's had in a half so far this season. And as you mentioned, really spreading the ball around so far with some guys we haven't really necessarily called their name too much throughout the first two games, including Brett Poole, uh, as well as Eric Bowen, too. Eric Bowen with the touchdown. Yes, and on the defensive side of things, C.J. Miller has done great with uh, sack, coupled with Grayson Stewart's amazing tackles, Abram Brewer's efforts, and the unsung hero right now, Jabari Finney, doing an excellent job locking up number eight, Jacob Henry, the main wide receiver for the Bobcat offense. Although this Bobcat receiving core is very dangerous, they decide to go with their running game more than their pass game, and our line has certainly put their foot down. Well, there has been, you know, we've seen Gutierrez, or Logan Gutierrez, the running back for Solana. He has been able to get free a few times, but for the most part, actually every time, because uh, the Coyote defense has not allowed a Bobcat offensive touchdown so far. They've bent, they haven't broken, given up a field goal, but also, uh, as we saw, it was just the uh, special teams kickoff return for the touchdown. Anna returns it to the field. Salina is already out there as we're a few seconds away from getting this third quarter started, 23-9. to But, yes, going back to this Coyote defense, C.J. Miller, we talked about him in the pregame, already five tackles. He's got a big sack as well. And Jamison Adams, six tackles as well. Just another cog in this Coyote defense that we get to speak about. He had a phenomenal first half you have a 23 to 9 lead this game is far far from over but you've got to just keep essentially I hate to say it but the pedal to the metal on this offense which has been able to get up and down the field absolutely this offense has so many different weapons that they've targeted tonight ronald bell brett Poole, edward chumley and sean steens as well as george rogers in there who's been getting some rushes it really doesn't stop on both ends of the ball it really seems like once you cut down one coyote two more coyotes take their place. Twenty-three to nine. As we go into the third quarter, no turnovers in the first half by either team. Everyone, they had some close ones. There was one caused fumble, but that was recovered by the same team. Mm -hmm. Camden Schlick back to kick. As we get the third quarter started. Here at Bobcat Stadium, third meeting in 12 months for these two teams, a battle of 4A Division I schools, as here is the return by Jacob Henry, and he'll be brought down at about the 28-yard line, and here comes Solana offense to start the third quarter. Well, you're right, Josh. This game hasn't been very sloppy, very disciplined. The penalties really haven't affected the game all that much, with really it being for tit for tat on each side. And like you said, no turnovers. And with a lot of the points coming on special teams, we've seen really good offense and really good defense be played on both sides. Yeah, the most exciting play in that first half was the blocked field goal that turned into a touchdown by Jaden Mason Davis after Jabari Finney, it appeared, got a hand on the kick. First and 10, here's the handoff to the running back, and that's Gutierrez once again. And it will eventually turn into a stalemate as the officials having to, once again, separate these two teams. Pardon me, that was Harrison Williams. And a, an extremely late flag it comes in. Might be the latest flag we've had all season long into a play. <laughs> Seems there was some, some yapping going on between the Anna defense. Head referee certainly giving the main defense an earful right now. And another unsportsmanlike penalty 
against Anna. That's number seven tonight, seventh penalty, I should say. But by my count, that's at least the third unforced error, if you will. So once again, free yardage to Salina. That'll put him at the 48-yard line on their side of the field. Seth Parr talking to the head official. Hasn't been too happy. We've seen unsportsmanlike penalties on both sides. Kind of what you'd expect with these two teams, these two towns separated 27 minutes or so from each other. Both teams are biting at the bits. Every single player that's out on that field right now has their calendar at home with a big fat red marker circled around this Friday night. Oh, it's one of the it's a terrific crowd here tonight. Quick handoff to Harrison Williams. He'll get wrapped up at the 50. Jaden Mason Davis here on the near side. A couple words exchanged with Caleb Hill, and now another late flag comes in. Well, as we were saying, it's not a very sloppy game. Both of these teams just roaring at the bits, coming out of halftime, ready to tear each other apart. Now Harrison Williams is walking away very emphatically from the official. Okay, so we'll just give it right back. So an unsportsman like this time on Salina. So we'll go the other way with applause from the Coyote defense. Cash Williams re-enters the game. And a trio of Coyotes exit. Jabari Finney back in the contest. Second and 23 for the Bobcats. Mason Davis and Tyrone Crockett in on the game, guarding number 27, Caleb Hill, on that right side. You can feel an earthquake from these Coyote fans rambling the grandstands. Here's a very distant throw, and it's caught. What a catch, Colton Rodriguez, as he got past Jaden Mason Davis over the shoulder catch. Longest play of the day for Solana on the passing side. Well, Rodriguez just ran a go route. That is that is an amazing play by Rodriguez. First and ten, handoff by Porter to Harrison Williams. Forward progress, and he's still falling forward, still going, and finally, Coyote defense wraps him up. He'll be stopped at about the 17-yard line. First down. Knox Porter, wide receiver in motion. They'll fake the handoff, and Harrison Williams takes it, had some space, and he gets wrapped up by Jamison Adams. But another first down gain, and the Bobcats find themselves in the red zone. Jamison Adams didn't make that chop block right there to stop the stop the run and he would be in the touch he would be in the end zone right now setting up a goal line defense hard run tight formation Williams hit once hit twice and now he'll be stopped and finally wrapped up his see Jamison Adams say nope let go don't hold on for him too long we've seen that a few times him and Grayson Stewart in there for the tackle forward progress spots the ball at the six yard line second and goal set up in the Porter's going to take it himself. He's got to get rid of it. And we've got a flag thrown. Kalem Brown covering the receiver. That's Ozeal Alberon. Now, there was a lot of pressure there applied on Porter. As he was flushed out of the pocket. Yes, sir. Brandon Green with that immediate pressure right there, just breaking right through it. That decoy, he did absolutely did not fall for it. Just went right by that immediate relief. Pre that immediate pressure caused that incomplete pass. But now it'll be pretty much half the distance to the goal. Now it looks like just on that two-yard line. Yeah. So pass interference in the end zone. So half the distance, and that makes it second and goal at the two-yard line. As the Bobcats are going to try to stuff the ball in the end zone. 
Quick handoff to Logan Gutierrez, and Abram Greer trying to hold him back. Forward progress. Touchdown. So Logan Gutierrez. And that makes it 23-15. As it'll be Braden Johnson in there for the kick. It certainly looked like the Cayo defense really stopped him right there. You saw a lot of their players kind of push back toward near the five-yard line, almost like they had the tackle, but supposedly that was not the case as the Bobcats tighten, shorten this lead from nine to make it 23-16. Let's go ahead and thank some of our fine sponsors here at Cayo Division. ER at Anna, a service of Texoma Medical Center. ball game with 9.18 to go. If you're a Solana fan, that's exactly what you want to see coming out of the half. They were aggressive. They made a big play on the passing side, something we didn't see much of in that first half, and they were able to punch in a score to make it what is now a one-score ball game very early here in the third quarter. Like we mentioned, that that makes the first touchdown they had scored that wasn't off of a special teams, off of a special teams for play, which happened from the kick return by... Camden Schlitt that was pushed back 10 yards because of the unsportsmanlike conduct. So Salina proving that their run game is deadly despite their first half performance. Jaden Mason Davis and Sean Steens back to return the kick. As Salina lines up for the kickoff. Braden Johnson. From the 40-yard line. One score game. Kick to Steen. He'll start at the four-yard line. Switching directions. And he will be wrapped up by five Bobcats. Cade Coker in there for the tackle. Now with this drive coming up, Anna has to bite back. With this, that last drive that Salina just had proving that they don't need just special teams to score, that their run game is still on point. Now we'll see how the Coyotes answer. Starting on this left hash mark here on the 15-yard line. Zach Roberson is the center. He'll hike the ball to Zai Williams. First and 10 for the Coyotes. Hand off to Chumley. Wrapped up, a, a broke free. And then he will be stopped just short of the 20-yard line. So we'll see down. Steens now running. He'll set up on the right side. Williams, high, quick throw. Bell has it, avoids one tackle, and then has to avoid the same tackler, and then he is wrapped up by everybody, it seems. It is a gain. It is a catch for Bell. And it is enough for a first down. So nice job by Bell there. Colton Rodriguez with that first contact to eventually bring Bell down. He's really been all over the place for this Bobcat defense. Three receivers set up on the right. Williams, Steens with a catch, and he's shoved out of bounds immediately. Forward progress keeps the clock moving at the 31-yard line. A gain of one. They say two. Second and eight now on the catch by Steens. Gained a solid 30 yards here so far. It's Bell and Bowen who have the touchdowns for Anna along with the field goal block that turned into a touchdown. Here's the snap on the second eight. Williams in trouble. Finds Steen, who is open. He was hidden in the corner at the 40-yard line, and he is forced out of bounds past the 50, and Steen's out of nowhere. Williams turning nothing into something there. Incredible pocket awareness by Zai. Saw the pressure coming in from the left side, scrambled right, saw Steen's for the little touch pass, got it over his defender for that first down. 
Zai Williams had five carries in the first half. Looked like he was going to have number six there. Now he'll just lob this one over to Chumley, and he will gain yardage here, about four yards. That wasn't a true pass. That was just a shovel pass forward, and Chumley with the reception. Some tie-up there with number 23 for Salina, Ben Thomas. These Anna fans seeming to want a certain call from him. Second and six. Williams will hand it off to Chumley. Thought about pulling it back. Chumley, big time collision there with the Bobcat. As he knocked over Luke Bigiani. And another first down gained on a nice carry from Chumley. Really getting involved here. As that is his ninth carry of the ball game. Quick snap, first and ten, throwing the corner to Bell. Sidesteps, trying to gain more. Instead, he is wrapped up and thrown out by Colton Rodriguez. Another positive gain as Anna slowly but surely moving down the field. That will make it second and four. Absolutely. There are not a lot of room for really getting their first downs to be immediate, uh, followed by a first down. More opting for the the three play first down, seeing some second and twos, second and threes like we're seeing now, third and fives. 23-16 is the score as Williams flushed out, thrown to the right side, that is caught, Ronald Bell, and that is enough for a first down. Bell once again. Bell with veteran savvy setting himself up on that right sideline, getting that, that toe tap in for the first down. Williams four for four in this second half so far. He'll drop back on the first and ten, and the throw just out of the reach of Brett Poole, who has a touchdown tonight, and that's his first incompletion so far that of ball, this second half. That ball could have been dangerous. Sorry for cutting you off there, Josh. Josh. That ball could have been dangerous. I feel like Zai... Didn't like it as soon as he left his hands, and Brett Poole visibly shaken up as he heads toward the sideline. He'll exit the ball game. That'll bring in Aiden Palmer. Second and ten for Anna. Williams' quick throw, and it's just out of the hands of Ronald Bell. That has been open for the most part tonight on those quick snap hooks to the right or the left. So that now brings up a sudden third and ten. Longest third down they've faced here. Brett Poole enters the game. Aiden Palmer subs out. Third and ten. A lot of room here on the left side of the field for Poole. Williams dropping back. Pressure coming. Williams out of the pocket. Finds Chumley here on the right side. And Chumley going to be brought down past the first down marker at the 16-yard line. Wow. Chumley dodging Rodriguez's lunge, sidestepping, getting some extra yardage for that first down. Great, great juke by Chumley. Aiden Palmer, Cash Williams rejoin the 11. As Eric Bowen, Brett Poole exit. But a first and 10 now for Anna in the red zone with a 23 to 16 lead on Salina. Fake handoff, Chumley Williams has a man in the end zone. Pass knocked away, incomplete. They went after Steens and a great defensive play there by Colton Rodriguez. So that'll make it second and 10. Rodriguez read that really well. He didn't even try and look up at the ball, instead looking in, in Steen's eyes for exactly when to put that mitt up and block that pass. That brings up this second and 10 from the 16-17 yard line here. Four wide receivers. Williams looking to the right side. Steen's on the run, sliding, makes the catch. Gain of about five to make it third and five. A little bit more manageable now in the red zone. That's nearly five pass plays in a row that the Anna offense has run. And it doesn't seem like we're slowing down at all as we see 
George Rogers and Mason Davis come onto the field. And excuse me, Aiden Palmer come onto the field. Interesting set to see both Chumley and Rogers at the same time. Set up on both yeah, sides. This is a formation we've only seen a couple of. come down and potentially tie this game. They'll take over at the 10-yard line. I'll take As about Efren Ramos' defense returns to the field. Immediate handoff to Logan Gutierrez. He's wrapped up by Grant Cervani. And a gain of about five, six yards there for Gutierrez. That's a good start for them. It'll take about 90 yards for them to potentially tie this game up. Very, very long drive here. See Porter in the backfield. Knox Porter, the quarterback for Salina. Quickly handed off to Gutierrez. He's got a hole, some space, and essentially ran into his own lineman, and now it's a tug of war, and it's still going. And finally, the officials blow this dead. C.J. Miller down there finally gets Gutierrez. But we've seen this Salina front four, front five, these linemen creating some gaps, creating some holes, and that's exactly where you'll find Harrison Williams and Logan Gutierrez, and this is their strong point of their running game. Absolutely. Like we mentioned earlier, and we saw evidence of I'll be unsportsmanlike. And another Anna. unsportsmanlike conduct against Anna. And yes. that'll get the Coyote faithful who have made the very short trip to Salina. The Boo Birds come out, but another penalty against Anna. That will set up first and 10 at the 38. And off Gutierrez, more space, and he'll be brought down at the 47-yard line. C.J. Miller there once again for the tackle. Our five-headed Hydra out there on the defense, really, really trying to quell the Salina Bobcats run game here. They've made some, made some decent yardage. We'll have to see if we can put that to a hold. First and two, or pardon me, second and one. What am I saying? Here's a long pass available for Henry. It's out of the reach. Coverage by Jabari Finney. That worked out earlier for a Knox Porter. Wasn't this time, but when you have second short yardage, you're going to go for that ball. So that will set up third and one, ball at the 47. All right, that was just kind of trying it, see if you could accept the go route. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Finney stuck on his hip like honey to a tree. And wow. Hand off Gutierrez. And will forward progress given the first down, it appears so. So that'll be first and 10 as he just crossed the 48 yard line. Clock is ticking, two, under three minutes to go in this third quarter. One score game. Salina driving down the field on a drive that started at their own 10 yard line. Sizable progress just outside of Anna territory here. 
And really, there's only been two drives that have taken up this whole entire third quarter. Gutierrez is the handoff, and again, the hole is there. He'll gain from the 49 three yards, and that'll wrap everything up. Grayson Stewart talking to his defense, one of the captains on this Coyote defensive squad. Both teams' grit is high tonight. We've seen time and time again that sort of tackle situation where it's not really a one-on-one one -on -one tackle, but it's more of a team versus team as there's a... We've got another flag. This is in the backfield well after the play. I think they're going to get Jamison Adams for saying something. And this is likely going to be another 15 for Salina added on. It will be. And again, Coyote fans not happy. Coyote boos dwarfing the Bobcat cheers right now. Wow. Ball with the 34 now. Almost half of. Yeah, that's, by my count, five unsportsmanlike calls mm -hmm. on Anna. Almost half of their penalties have been unsportsmanlike. And on this drive, almost half of the Salina yardage they've got was from our penalty. Harrison Williams in. He finds a gap. Miller wraps him up. It's a gain at to the 25-yard line. Great tackle there by C.J. Miller. That's pretty much the first one-on-one -on -one tackle we might have seen this drive. Clock ticking, but the Salina drive continues to march as they're at the... 25-yard line, second and three for the Bobcats. Porter waits, snaps. He'll drop back to throw. Pass knocked away. Flags go flying. That's going to be pass interference. And that'll be on Jabari Finney. Finney. Seth Parr, he wants offensive here. Certainly looked like it, too. Finney just trying to get that inside route. And honestly, Henry looking to really Parr, invite that contact. Parr is yeah. extremely animated on this sideline. Oh, and now we've got a flag. Oh, it actually hits Parr. Oh, that now flag hit him, oh and boy. now everybody just hold on tight here. Wow. This is getting out of hand now. Bill Elliott, the head coach of Salina, has called his team over. And right now you've got to hope that cooler heads have to prevail here. Seth Parr going after these officials. Seth Parr is ready for a matchup at UFC 94, inviting him. The official threw the flag, and it came down and hit Parr on the left shoulder. Now they're going to talk about it. These boos absolutely deafening, and the Anna bench hyping them up. So they've moved. Okay, now they'll finally move the football. So it's going to be first and 10 at the 11. This Anna, After all that, and Parr is still having to be estranged by his assistant coaches. Really at their boiling point. Gosh. 122 to go. Hopefully we can convert this frustration into a strong offensive drive here next time it finds itself in our hands. So it essentially was back-to-back -back penalties. Here's now Porter. First and 10 at the 11. Harrison Williams, he's going to break free. He's going to score. Touchdown, Bobcats. That'll make it 23-22. And we've got a tie game pending the extra point. Just a good halfback stretch right there by Harrison Williams. Really, really just beating our defender out to the wide side and getting that touchdown.
Braden Johnson for the extra point. It's good. We've got a tie game. Just, just a minute 16 left in the third quarter. I want to take this time and thank some of our uh, fine Coyote Vision uh, sponsors, Quick Car Lube and Auto Care. Come see Quick Car Lube and Auto Care of Anna for your quick vehicle services. Twenty-three, twenty-three, with one sixteen left to go in the third quarter. I don't know the exact time on that, but that drive was almost what eight minutes long, and that was just the the running time. If you incorporate all the talk they had about the unsportsman likes and the discussion with Seth Parr, wow. Seth Parr is talking to every official he can find in visual range. 116 to go. Coyotes fighting through some adversity here now. We'll see what the offense, what they can do. It'll be a Salina kickoff at the 40, 116 to go. Anna led 23-9 at the half. Pair of touchdowns scored by the Bobcat offense in this third quarter. And now we're going to have a delay here. I have no clue. So some sort of an ejection. As evidently that is someone here at Bobcat Stadium. So we'll resume now again. Getting back into it. It's living up to the hype. No doubt about it. <laughs> we'll resume with 1.16 to go. Here comes the kickoff for Braden Johnson. Caught by Steens. He'll take off with it. He'll be stopped at the 16-yard line. Steens trying to make something happen. 23-23, but so far, all Salina in this second half. So now Seth Parr and his offense going back to work. So the past two drives have been bit by bit, little by little, trench warfare. We have to see if a little bit of hurry up will be incorporated here. Williams dropping back, first and 10. Poole is open. He's got enough for a first down and a little more. He'll be shoved out at the 31-yard line. Good start here on the first play of this offense on this third drive. Pardon me, second drive of this quarter. So the catch for Poole. He's got a touchdown tonight. Williams getting the play call. Makes the handoff. Throw to Bell. Pass was low, and it's in the turf. Incomplete. Now set up second and ten. Pass was a little low from Bell. Tyler Vincent covering Bell. He was very close by him. Show me to Williams' left. 
Williams takes the snap, drops like very deep throw, out of the reach. It was above Eric Bowen, and it was nearly intercepted by Tyler Vincent off his hands incomplete. Gosh, that was close. That was an opportunity. Bowen had some space. Pass just a little too high from Williams, so now third and ten after what was the pool first down. Williams dropping back on the snap. He sees some space. He's off to the races. A flag comes in. Williams running to the right side, forced out of bounds. We'll see what the penalty is. If not, he'll be short about two yards to the first down marker. But mo no doubt thrown in the area of holding, and that is what it's going to be. As you see, a lot of frustration, a lot of hand flailing by this offensive line, Lane White. Wasn't too thrilled with that. Penalty amount significantly increasing coming out of halftime. 45 seconds left to go in the third quarter and a very distant third and 20 now. And in danger of giving Salina the ball back in favorable territory. Williams runs over to Chumley, gives him some directions. Here's the snap. Williams off to the races, throw incomplete, and there'll be no flag. It was intended for Brett Poole, incomplete, sets up fourth and 20. Now to bring on the punt team for Anna. Very, oh gosh, just a, a disappointing drive from the Anna offense with so much time to rest with how long their defense was out there, you would think they'd be raring to go and not, well, you've got to not credit, backing you've down. You've got to credit the Bobcat defense as well. They're hyped up at the moment. And a couple passes that just don't go Anna's way forces the fourth and 20. And once again, penalties is a problem as well. Mm -hmm. Adams there for the punt. And Salina is going to let this bounce in a oh, very yeah. favorable bounce. Oh, it hit about yeah. the 40-yard line. It'll be downed at the 24-yard line. 28 seconds left. Salina with the football in a 23-23 game. I want to thank more of our fine sponsors here on Coyote Vision. Steel Fab Incorporated. Continuous improvement. Thanks to Steel Fab Incorporated for coming along this season. Salina with all the momentum. First and 10, 28 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And we'll see what the Bobcat offense does. Porter with the fake snap. Hand off to Harrison Williams, space on the right side. Miller can't wrap him up, and he is forced out of bounds. Jaden Mason Davis, another carry by Harrison Williams. That'll stop the clock, 22 seconds left to go in the quarter. And that's an eight-yard gain, second and two. Now they'll be just shy of converting that, fir that first down. Seeing the same matchups that we've been seeing all night. Brown on Jacob Henry. Seeing Cervaney on Caleb Hill. And off to Williams. And he has stopped. They have just got past the line of scrimmage. Big-time tackle. That's Willie Boyd in there who made the stop. That should end the quarter. They'll mark the ball at the 32, which will set up third and two, and we will do that on the other side of the quarter. It's Salina, it's Anna. We're going to the fourth, tied just as it's scripted. We will take a break. We're back in a few seconds on Coyote Vision. Steel Fab Inc. Continuous improvement. Hutchins Plumbing and Air Conditioning. Get it done right, right now. Come visit Freedom Flex Car Wash and its veteran and first responder owned facility where cleanliness, care, and customer experience is their mission. Texas Bank, proudly serving Texas communities for 50 years. ER at Anna, a service of Texoma Medical Center. Magnet Realty, providing you with a magnetic real estate experience. Your locally owned and operated real estate brokerage. ADON Complete Air Conditioning and Heating, your high efficiency experts. 
Quick Car Lube and Auto Care. We're committed to auto repair and to serving you with quality and value. We begin the fourth quarter here in Salina, Texas at Bobcat Stadium. Thanks for hanging out with us on Coyote Vision. We know we've had some technical difficulties. Appreciate you working us through it. Our first ever road broadcast. We've got a tie game, 23-23. Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lowry. And it's going to be Salina with the football. But it's a big down here, third and two at the 32. Snap, handoff, Williams, he's got it. Plenty of it as well as he is tripped up, stopped at the 38-yard line, first down for the Bobcats. Tackle by C.J. Miller right there. And, Josh, I'm going to be honest, this is probably the most important drive of the whole game. Scores are tied. Tensions are high. This Anna defense has been struggling a bit with penalties. This Anna offense has been a locomotive train that cannot be stopped. So this might be the one that's tied for either team. If it's a stop from Anna, it could be Anna's night. If it's a score from from Salina, it could be Salina's night. Pass knocked away as Porter tried to throw it over to Caleb Hill for the first time tonight. That'll make it second and ten. A rare first down throw from Salina. 11.35 left in this one. Here's a snap, handoff Harrison Williams. And he'll be wrapped up Gain of about a yard. Somebody's helmet comes off. They'll have to exit the game for one play. As Williams was wrapped up in the helmet. Belong to Nathan Nickerson. So he exits the game. Gain of one to set up third and nine. What well, may be one of the most important possessions of this game. Well, here's a very important down to make it third and nine. Oh, motion on the front line. This looks like it's going to Salina. Zayden Demos with that jump. Something I want to point out about the Salina offense in their run game. They set up almost the same formation with their O-linemen every single time. They bring that H back in to sit just behind the lineman to provide a very strong punch, which allows for a lot of room for rushing gain. One punch to adapt to most likely C.J. Miller getting in there. has proved out really well for them. Third and 14, timeout. Timeout, Anna. First timeout of this second half for either team. Coyotes have two remaining. But that false start forces a third and 14 for Salina. And breaking the trend there, like you said, the Salina offense started with a first on their first down. Most recently here, they started with a throw which resulted in an incomplete. And now look at where they've ended up. The one time they break the script with what they've been going with, it didn't work out for them. Salina is two for seven converting at third downs, but this one has some distance to it, third and 14, 23-23. This is a big moment here for the defense. Never seen a third and 14 yet this game. Huh. Order in the offense returns. Defense is ready to go. 10.48 to go. Tie ball game, 23-23. Three receivers set up on that left side. That could be where the action is. Logan Gutierrez, the running back to Knox Porter's left. Now he will move to his right. Now he'll set up as a slot receiver. Third and 14. Porter looking to his left. Pass caught and then tackled immediately. Colton Rodriguez had it. A gain of about six yards, and it's fourth down. And the punt team comes on for Salina. 
Miller and Kalen Brown there with the pressure to force that first down, fourth, fourth down, excuse me. Excellent, excellent job. Now we need to convert this defense into offense. We're going to be at great territory from where Finney is sitting in the backfield right now. This should be around the 35 to 30 yard line. Punt is away. Finney checks the pressure and he calls for fair catch. Impressive catch there by Finney. Had to lean back. Pressure from Colton Place, the junior for Salina. Amidst all that, amidst all we've seen so far in this ball game, 23-23, the Anna offense has possession with 10-10 to go in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. The off-field antics almost have really have really messed up the game experience a little bit. We've been able to focus in on what's going on on the field as well as what's going on off the field. A total encompassment of high school football going on here tonight. Cash Williams, the linebacker, out there as a fullback. Zion Zay Williams is there. First and 10 for Anna. The defense did their job. Let's see what the offense can do. They'll hand it off to Chumboy. He finds a big gap. He loses the football. Salina picks it up, and they've got it in Anna territory. Carter Lorick with the fumble recovery. Gosh. Oh, that is heartbreaking. Absolutely not what Seth Parr and the Anna offense th drew up for their drive. What was going to be a modest gain by Chumley loses his second fumble of the year. Third fumble lost now in three games for Anna. And a big-time swing now with 10.05 to go. Salina in prime territory, all spotted at the 36-yard line. Low snap, and Gutierrez picks it up, and then he is hit and dragged to the ground. Nice stop by Caden Stribling there, the nose tackle. That was a low snap, and Gutierrez did a nice job to pick it up and hang on to it. Great play. Starting with the second and 10 is always... Always a great start. We saw it in the last drive, and it resulted in a eventual punt. So you have to think that lightning strikes twice, and that it would be the same case. Sets up second and 10. Ball was on the 37-yard line. Quarterback, Logan Gutierrez. He'll take it, find some space, and is finally wrapped up as he gets the 32-yard line. You saw it evident right there. Josh Bennett, he waited a little bit longer, came underneath. He was set up in the right tackle position, came underneath and waited to accept one blocker whenever, whenever the running back was right behind him. And look at the extra yardage they just got. Third and six. The block has been really successful. They're set up in that now with that, with that H-back set up. Third and six. Can the Anna defense come up strong once again? Here's the hike. Throwing and pass incomplete out of the hands of Colton Rodriguez to set up fourth and six. Now if you're Bill Elliott, the head coach of Salina, what do you want to do here? Man, you got to think another, another run play. The run play has been consistent for you all night, and it certainly has been consistent this half. But the, but the pass play is always, it's going to get you more. They set up in that same position. Anything can come from this. Let's see. Fourth and six. Porter drops back. He'll throw. It's incomplete. Turnover on downs. And the Anna defense survives the fumble, survives the turnover. And just like we had about two minutes ago, they'll have the ball as it will be spotted at the 32-yard line, but a couple big incomplete passes by Salina, and Colton Rodriguez has to, you have to feel for the young man right now. It was a fastball strike, and it popped right out, and that last pass on the fourth down just over the head of Rodriguez, and here's Zy Williams in the Anna offense taking over. Absolutely. Grayson Stewart was right in the way of that pass, forced him to throw it high, Eventually led to the incompletion. 8.39 to go in the fourth quarter. Hand off and with some space, Chumley and tries to fight back to the line of scrimmage as he will be forced out, gain of about two yards. Yeah. 
Bell and Palmer, the receivers to Zai's right. Here's a snap, handoff on the second and eight, and immediately dropped Chumley. So now we've seen back-to-back -back rushes, the first one for two yards, this one for one yard gain. So now we have to see a pass as Eric Bowen comes onto the field to meet his, his teammate, Brett Poole. Both of them have touchdowns on the night. Who doesn't have a touchdown is Sean Steens. Could we see potentially one coming this drive or this is great a, catch this play? This is a third and seven. Chumley in motion. Zai, throw up the middle. It's caught by Steens. He'll be dropped at the logo and a first down for Anna. Clutch, clutch by Steens. That'll set up first and 10. Zai Williams, fake handoff. He'll throw to the right side. Pass caught by Bell, and he'll step out of bounds right at the 45-yard line now in Salina territory, 7.28 on the clock. Making our, making our good progress. So it's a second and three. Williams drops back on the snap. He's got pressure coming. He's got to get rid of this ball. He's going to be hit, hit hard by a couple coyote or a couple bobcats. Pardon me. Oh, and he'll shove at the end, and we've got a flag coming in. Zai got shoved late, well after the play was over by a bobcat. Anna fans, they know what's going to happen here. There's the call, unsportsmanlike conduct, and it goes the way of the Bobcats, and that is a big change there. Zy Williams was facing all sorts of pressure from the right side. And now the ball moves to the 31-yard line, first and 10, 7-17 to go in the fourth quarter. Yes, although it was impressive what Ben Thomas did on that near sack right there to force him down, that extra push definitely gave us nice yardage there. First and 10, Williams pass in traffic. It's caught, and now it'll be a shoving match and some progress made. Anna fans like that effort. Chumley made the catch. Gain of four to make it second and six. Yeah, that screen pass was looking to be a little bit bad because he threw it right there with two Bobcats on both sides, but they tackled him forward, got nice four yards out of it. Williams flushed out, being chased by the Bobcats. Pass thrown, and it's through a couple Coyotes. It'll be incomplete. Pass thrown intended for Steens. Eric Bowen was over there as well. And that'll set up third and six now. Pressure by Carter Lorick for Salina. Third and six. This third down could potentially decide the game. Williams throws deep. Steens, he made the catch! He's in the end zone! Touchdown, Coyotes! The ultimate competitor, Sean Steens. Wow, the vertical, the vertical he got to get up to that ball over his two defenders, not just one, but two defenders, and in there for the touchdown. They're, they're no strangers to the fourth down, but even though they're running 70% on their fourth downs, they say, screw it, we'll do well on third down also. Wow, what a play. Big conversion on the third down, and it's a Sean Steens touchdown. And we're gonna get a timeout called as Michael Hinckley was out there, Camden Schlick, Evidently was supposed to be the kicker to go out there. So confusion on special teams forces Seth Parr to utilize his second timeout. You never want to have to call a timeout with improper personnel on special teams. Let's go back to the Sean Steens touchdown. Pass up the middle, through a couple Bobcats, and he tippy-toed his way into the end zone. Yeah, just completely broke by them. We've been looking 
We've been absent of the Sean Steen's party that he can be put on. We thought we would be left out tonight. He made sure to please all the fans that we were here, made sure that his name would go etched in the history of this game. And we saw Hinkley miss an extra point earlier. So now Camden Schlick, he kicked the last one. He's in here to kick this one. It's up and good. So Schlick with his second extra point here tonight. Anna has taken the lead 30 to 23 with 622 to go in the ball game. I want to thank more of our uh, fine uh, sponsors here on uh, Coyote Vision. Magnet Realty, providing you with a magnetic real estate experience, your locally owned and operated real estate brokerage. Magnet Realty, thank you to them. 30 to 23, and again, a 23-9 score at halftime. You almost knew this was going to happen. You go into the you into the fourth quarter in a tie ball game, a couple big defensive stops, big turnover. Coyotes get the stop. They march down the field. They get the touchdown. They have the lead, but with 6.22 to go, Salina getting ready to have the ball. Although the Coyotes lost their third quarter with their multiple penalties that drug them down as well as the, as well as the Bobcats evening out the score, they've certainly won this fourth quarter right now as they give it back to the Salina Bobcats. This is good stuff. There's a lot of eyes on this game. We appreciate you being with us tonight. First road broadcast for us here on Coyote Vision. We're high atop the visitors' coaches' box here at Bobcat Stadium. Thanks to everyone for letting us do what we get to do here tonight. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's a kickoff by Camden Schlick. And it'll be taken. And on the run... That was Bo Bentley. Remember, he had a kickoff return for a touchdown in the first half as he'll be dropped about the 28-yard line. They'll mark him at the 26. Great tackle by Tyrone Crockett. He was certainly moving there. Tyrone doing an excellent job stopping that momentum. Putting the halt on. This will be at the 26, just beyond where they would normally have a touchback. It's about pretty much your normal average drive, except something that is not average is the intensity of the crowd and game here tonight. On both sides, oh, we've got a false start on Salina, and no one is more fired up than the nose tackle, Caden Stribling. Knows it, everybody knows it, and that's going to make it a first and 15 now, 6-16, not exactly the start Salina and head coach Bill Elliott wanted to see. Here's the snap. Harrison Williams takes the handoff. Looked like he was initially wrapped up. Then he gets wrapped up. C.J. Miller and Abram Greer stop Harrison Williams. Gain of about one. He got that extra block, tried to go on the more left side of it, but C.J. has been seeing that all night, read right through it for the tackle. And Abram Greer wanted to help him out as well. Now they're set up on this left hash mark. A lot of room on this right side as they stack the right side of the quarterback here with that H-back. Second and 14. Pump fake snap by Knox Porter. He's looking back to throw. He's got time. He's got space. He airs one out. Colton Rodriguez on the run. It's through his hands. Incomplete pass as Cervani and Adams were giving chase and just off the fingertips of Colton Rodriguez. It's really been really been struggling with pulling the ball in lately in the third quarter he had some slip ups against us on defense and now he goes in on the offensive side trying to get some big yardage right there that would have been almost 35 yards right there unfortunately out of his hands great throw by knox porter but it now sets up third and 14 535 left to go in the fourth We've got a stoppage and a timeout for Salina. That'll be their first timeout used. P pardon me, their second timeout used. They'll have one remaining. Third and 14 in a 30 to 23 game that Anna currently leads. Remember, it was 23 to 9. At the half, just joining us, Brett Poole got it all started. Made it 7-0 with a touchdown pass from Zai Williams. 
Slide went down, kicked a field goal. And then first touchdown of the year for Eric Bowen, made it 14 to three. And then maybe the play of the game so far, plenty more time to make another one. Jabari Finney with a hand on the field goal attempt by Salina. Ball was recovered by Jaden Mason Davis. He ran it all the way for a special teams touchdown to make it 20 to three. Salina is answered back in the second half. But just moments ago, Sean Steens with a big touchdown catch to make it 30-23. to We're back underway. Hand off to Harrison Williams. He's wrapped up. Grayson Stewart takes down Harrison Williams. And the big fella, Alex Martinez, with that amazing contact. That'll bring out special teams unit. And giving Anna the ball back, five minutes left on the clock whenever they kick it, of course. What a defensive stop. At a time you had to have it, sets up fourth and 12 in a 30 to 23 game and the clock is ticking. Five minutes, here comes the punt. It is away, this is a short punt and the ball is going to bounce in an Anna favor and that is not what Salina needed. As Anna takes over on offense at the 44 yard line. So 4-5, 4 on the game clock. And what would this Anna offense draw up? See Chumley out there. I'm, I'm thinking it's just going to be Chumley all the way for the rest of the game unless they're facing a third down. Because you want to get off as much clock on there as possible because this – Although Anna has been playing really, really well. They're throwing this. the ball. Steen's got it. And that is going to be just shy of a first down gain of eight. Nice catch by Steen's up the middle, just like we saw with his touchdown moments ago to make it second and two. As I was saying, this Salina offense can really blow up at any, any moment and go for huge, huge yardage. So our gains will be either far and few between with Chumley or extended yardage with Steens and the other receivers. And Seth Parr is in no hurry. Play clock down to six now. And Zy Williams hikes it at three. He'll hand it off to Chumley, stumbles forward, and that's enough for a first down. Got a five-yard gain, and that'll set up first and ten on the 31. And again, the clock is ticking. Now, four minutes to go. Left's got some early, early pressure from number 28, Cooper Farrow, but just tuked him out of his socks. Blew right by him for the first down. Seth Parr and his offense continuing to trust Chumley after that fumble. In this second half. But he has had some good carries so far Williams and it will slide down and again oh and we got a flag coming in on a very late hit looked like Cooper Farrow number 28 for Salina made contact with Zy Williams's helmet as he would already slid and slid on the ground that's something we talked about with coach Parr a couple weeks ago about how he just has to try to tell Zy Williams to slide every now and then he slid there and it might have added Yards, and yes, flag actually on Grayson Buchanan, pardon me. So late hit on Zy Williams, 3.30 to go. That sets up first in 10. Now you're in the red zone at the 15. Well, the slide honestly might be the imp most impressive thing that Zy's added to his game. He's incredible rusher, has led the team multiple times in rush yards in the past few games. So now with the slide, defenses don't know what to do. He's in trouble here. And he's going to have to go down. Sack for Salina, Ben Thomas. All over that one. Like a Venus flytrap right there. That's tough. So they face this second and 14 now. So again, play clock is going to continue to tick. Now three minutes to go. Personnel interchanging. Seven seconds on the play clock. And here's a second and 14 after the sack. Hand off to Chumway. Positive yardage. Back inside the 20. Stopped at the 19. 
And that'll be all, almost back to the original line of scrimmage and actually a yard past it to set up third and nine. And it appears we're going to have a timeout here. Looks like Seth Parr uses his final timeout. I'd like to point out how consistent Chumley has been with his runs here tonight. Almost every single one has been for gain or even at least tying it. I don't think he's had a single run for loss at all tonight. That's something incredibly valuable you want in your running back. Well, this is... We talked with Coach Parr during the week about how his offense really isn't built like any other uh, district team that he'll face or, or Salina, the regional teams that uh, are run heavy, not too pass heavy. Anna, one of the few teams, especially in the district, that are pass heavy, and it takes so much game planning. He, we talked to him, he said, we don't game plan it two days before, three days before. We're working on that during the summer. We're showing the guys film during the summer about all these teams and their running formations and their running game plans. And so far, Anna has kind of taken a page out of some of these district teams how to run the ball, Chumley, with some great yardage here tonight, a season high. They're not built like any other team around here. They're built different. The clock has stopped at 2.22. This is a third and nine. The ball is on the 14. That's Jaden Poole who is in motion. The backup quarterback in Williams is going to be wrestled to the ground. Loss of yardage. And that will set up a fourth down. I think you take it safe and, and kick a field goal. You're going to go down to two minutes, and again, Salina out of timeout. So, pardon me, that was actually a Salina timeout that was called. So now they have no more timeouts, assuming they would get the ball back in this next one, which it looks like they may. So eight, so eight seconds. Nobody's in any rush at the moment. And Seth Parr will call his timeout. Expected. So what is the game plan now with the ball on the 17? This would be a 34-yard field goal for Camden Schlick. Now, he was out there as he'll come back to the huddle. Remember, Schlick kicked a field goal earlier. It was a 26-yarder. And his first – and the team's first field goal of the season was made here tonight. Yes. Well, he just crushed it. From, from the 25-yard line, pretty much practicing it from nearly exactly where it's going to be. That's got to be a sign of things to come. The ball was on the right hash mark. 136 to go. Anna with a seven-point lead on Salina. One timeout left for Anna. No timeouts left for the Bobcats as we are coming down to the wire here at Bobcat Stadium. Camden Schlitt is out there. Jameson Adams is the holder. In some of Salina's past games, they've only won it by the distance in score of a field goal. So how poetic would it be that a field goal is the dagger? Snap, kick, up, kick, no good. Wide left. That one was just a knuckleball. Had, just had the distance, but to the left of the upright. So the missed field goal by Schlicht with 1.31 to go. Gives the football to Salina on the 20-yard line. You've got your money's worth here tonight in a battle of number two for Anna, number five, Salina. 1.31 to go. Remember, Salina out of timeouts. And their run game is really strong, but the, the inconsistency of Colton Rodriguez tonight on the offensive end will prove very difficult in this two-minute drill that they're running here. See what the defense has. Porter with the throw. Pass caught and immediately down. The clock is going to continue to run here. That pass was caught by Caleb Hill, scrambling up to the line. That is a second and one at the 29. Porter dropping back. Throwing deep. He's got a man! Off to the races is Caleb Hill! He's going to score! Touchdown, Bobcats! 107 left. Caleb Hill got free around Jabari Finney. 
And the defense are talking about the mismatch. 107. Finney, I suppose, was expecting more of a curl route or just the route to stop, not just a straight go. And that misread by him, incredibly costly. And this will, man, they have the chance to tie it here. Well, this is big right now, 107 to go. Here comes the kick from uh, Braden Johnson. Snap is good, kick is up, it's good. We are tied, 107 to go, 30 to 30. Here at Bobcat Stadium, just like that. Anna will have a chance. Remember, Salina, should this should we need a little extra? They played an overtime game in this stadium last week. Knocked off Walnut Grove, 38-35. But the Anna offense, assuming the kickoff works out, will have the ball with 1.07 to go in one timeout. One timeout, and with our pass game being more on point than it ever has been this season, it's it's looking good. I, I I've got I've got a lot of hope, and I'm sure Seth Parr has certainly inspired their offense to go out there and take it whenever they get this this kick here. A rivalry that spans 70 years between these two towns, these two schools. We've got a 30-30 ball game here in 2023. Adams is back along with Sean Steens for the Coyotes. Here comes the kick by Braden Johnson. We've seen Steens all night long not afraid to try to run this back. Kick by Johnson. It's over to Adams. And he'll field it. And we'll go to 25. Everybody is on the edge of their seat here. Well, not everybody's on the edge of these at the edge of their seat. They're not even in their seats. Every nearly every single butt is out of a seat right now and standing up to watch this game and how it'll run down. Wow. Great crowd for Salina. It's Terrific crowd so cool. for Anna. Before we even got here today, there was already a core of purple sitting in the stands who were here as soon as the gates opened. Tie ball game, fourth quarter, 30-30. to 30. And it's Zy Williams out there to lead this offense. Can they pull off some magic? In the, final nine, in the final 66 seconds, Williams, pressure coming. Pressure coming. He's down. Sack. Ben Thomas takes down Williams. His second sack on the night. It's a loss of about 10. Makes it about second and 20. They get set up again, saving their timeout. 40 seconds left to go. Williams dropping back. Throw up the middle, and Steen's unable to gather it in. Incomplete. That'll make it somewhere in the area of about third and 16. 30 to 30 is our score. There's the halfback. Williams is going to take it himself. And he will be brought down at the 31-yard line. That will set up fourth down. Clock running for the first time this year, but for the second time in seven days in this stadium, we've got an overtime. 30-30. What else did you expect in this one between Salina and Anna? When we come back, overtime, let's take 30 seconds to recognize our Coyote Vision sponsors. Steel Fabbing, 
continuous improvement. Hutchins Plumbing and Air Conditioning. Get it done right, right now. Come visit Freedom Flex Car Wash and its veteran and first responder owned facility where cleanliness, care, and customer experience is their mission. Texas Bank, proudly serving Texas communities for 50 years. ER at Anna, a service of Texoma Medical Center. Magnet Realty, providing you with a magnetic real estate experience. Your locally owned and operated real estate brokerage. Adon Complete Air Conditioning and Heating, your high efficiency experts. Quick Car Lube and Auto Care, we're committed to auto repair and to serving you with quality and value. We're going to overtime at Bobcat Stadium. The score between the Anacayotes and the Solana Bobcats all square at 30. So both teams to hit the reset button. NCAA college rule overtime here in UIL Texas High School football as all the officials huddled up at midfield. Josh Sowers alongside Nash. Right, Nash, we've seen a little bit of everything here tonight. Actions are high. We all know that. We've had a plethora of penalties on both sides of the ball. But you mentioned it just moments ago, just how amped up both these crowds are. And especially here on this visitor's side, nearly a full house of Anna fans, standing room only, as we look down from the visitor's coach's box. You can barely even see the metal bleachers. It's just only purple. It's only purple that you can see. And looking across from we can see only orange. Both of these crowds absolutely hyped that this is going to end overtime. Really, like, with this type of matchup this early in the year, you really, this is the ultimate hope. Like, this is the ideal matchup. You would like to think that, okay, yes, if it went fourth quarters and it went down to wire, like, yes, that would be even cooler. But the fact that it gets to go to overtime on this night under the lights... Incredible. We'll wait for the coin toss, and it actually appears to be the head coaches that are going to go out. Typically, sometimes you see the team captains go out. It'll be the head coaches out there at midfield. This could be entertaining. After a game today that you know, we've seen, we've counted at least about seven, eight, unsportsmanlike penalties it's probably for the best that it's the coaches yeah so that is what they're doing now they're discussing the overtime rules and again college ncaa football college rules get the ball at the 25 yard line and then we'll go from there You know, there's a couple different broadcasts here tonight. And like I said, everybody's getting their money's worth. As we're playing a little bit longer here tonight. Wouldn't miss it for the world. And if anybody wasn't here at the start of the game, they are certainly here now. There's not a single parking space open and not a seat left unattended. Salina wins the coin toss, and Seth Parr says he wants to go. They want to play at the south end zone here at Bobcat Stadium. So they choose to defend, as will be the Coyote offense, on this first possession to begin things in overtime. There you go. Second overtime, you must go for two. Ball spotted at the 25 at the left hash mark. Bobcat defense is out there. And really, last two possessions, Zion Dre Williams knocked down three times in the backfield. What will Seth Parr's offense draw up here in overtime? This offensive line clearly fatigued. fatigued. It's been a long, grueling game. And we have to see if there's a new spark that has been lightened here. First and ten, pass deflected and almost intercepted. Ben Thomas once again, who had a sack just moments ago in regulation. That'll set up second and ten now. He's providing a lot of great pressure for this Bobcat defense. 
sit there and run over their plays. And again, there is no play clock. The only clock is the play clock. That was nice. <laughs> Chumley to Williams is right. He'll take the handoff, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Immediately met by a Jamison driver and Carter Lorick for the neutral gain. Third and ten now the Coyotes face. Third and ten, as you said. Williams in the shotgun, dropping back, pressure coming. Williams has to scramble. He gets free, thrown, pass complete. That appears to be Bowen, and it is, he's right at the first down marker. Now they're going to rule him short. And they're going to say ruled short. It's going to be a fourth and not even one, maybe fourth in eight inches. So you see Cash Williams come onto the field. Abram Greer still sitting out. It would be nice to see if he made an appearance, but do you think they go with the 92%, the quarterback sneak? Judging by the yard marker, you've just got to get to the white line. Fourth in almost nothing, and we'll get a timeout. You get a timeout in overtime. Seth Parr calls it. I think in a game like this, after what you just saw, the missed field goal by Camden Schlick, I'm not down there. I'm not coaching this team. I think you go for it, but now let's see what you can draw up on fourth in just a few inches. Got to break through. Got to break through this fourth down. And do we – honestly, the most important part is really just breaking through that 15-yard line, not even the not even the end zone yet. Yeah, we're curious to see what kind of – how if they stack this up. Run a goal line, run a goal line offense, and see if they're, see if they're out there. Coyotes return to the field. Cash Williams is out there. There's only two receivers. You've got Chumley in there. Cash Williams is there, and oh yeah, it looks like they're going to try to shove Zy Williams here. They're Still getting the play call, trying to get everything settled. Bell set up on the left side. What maybe. could be the game? And a flag. Anna thinks it's on Salina. Offside. Offsides. And that, after all that drama, gives the Coyotes the first down. Incredibly. So that stacked clutch. front line able to do enough to draw the defense offsides. And that sets up. Brand new set of downs. This is first and ten at the ten and quarter mark. <laughs> Hand it off. Chumley breaks through one tackle, and then he is tripped up. May have gained a yard. Tackle made by Cooper Farrow. So although although there is a chance for a first a first down. There's pretty much this is essentially such a, a this small is second, margin. This is second and goal. Yes. But in reality, it is second and nine. As now Eric Bowen, Brett Poole re-enter the game for Cash Williams and Aiden Palmer. Chumley to Williams is right. Shotgun formation. Here's a snap. Williams looking. It's intercepted. Salina takes over. It was picked off by Tyler Vincent. Pass intended to the right side for Steens. Bell was over there as well. And the Anna offense fails to score in their possession. And Salina in the driver's seat here in overtime. Just a bit too much heat on it. I guess Steens wasn't turned around. Quick enough, by the time you could recognize that it was in front of him, it was in Vincent's hands. Gosh, not what we wanted to see there. So now Salina will start from the 25. You've got to force a turnover. Got to get a stop. 
Let's see what the end of defense can pull through. Oxport to the quarterback. He'll take the snap, hand it off to Harrison Williams, and he is wrapped up immediately. Forward progress gives him a yard to force second and nine. That's step one for this Anna defense. All right, you might think about the third down defense, might even think about the fourth down defense. What are we going to do if it's goal line, if it's fourth and inches like we just saw? But you need to get past the first down first. And they just proved that they did that. Snap low. Williams able to pick it up, and that causes some chaos as he runs into the pile back to the line of scrimmage. Actually may have lost a yard there, so that sets up third and ten now. Okay, that's step two. Alex Martinez reenters the game for Anna. Third and ten. So two snaps to Williams. One a bit low to the ground, but really have gained nothing. They've evened out. Third and ten. Will they go to their running game or offer to go up in the air, unlike the pass two? Porter waiting. Mortal combat tensions run high. And he flushed out to the right side, pressure, and he throws it away and now sets up fourth and ten. And now... That's great the stuff. The kicking unit enters the game as Braden Johnson can win this with a made field goal for Salina. That's great stuff by Abram Greer right there to apply that pressure, just blowing right by Harrison Williams, number seven for Salina, and forcing basically forcing that incomplete. If he didn't throw that right there, it definitely, definitely would have been a sack. A 37-yard field goal attempt. Remember, Anna has blocked a field goal in this game. 37 yards to win it for Salina. Braden Johnson, snap, kick is up. No good. Shanked left, and the Anna defense comes through again. And the special teams unit, another forced missed field goal on Salina, 30 to 30. Let's try this again in round two. So, so strong. Wow, you might think that offense is more important. O offense is the most important. Defense is the most important. Overlook special teams. Never overlook special teams. It has been basically the game decider here tonight. Certainly, Anna is definitely beating the Bobcats on the special teams. Well, and here's what happens now. You've got the stop. You've got to switch ends of the field. And the Bobcat offense is about to go out there again because you flip. So the Anna defense remains out there. As everybody moves left to right, we go to the north end zone now here at Bobcat Stadium as we are now in essentially possession two of this overtime period. Nash, I know you and I are used to this, but this is this is crazy. Yeah, if you if you really want the high school football experience, like Friday Night Lights is just Get three words. Get up here to 4A. It's just three words to some people, but like not for 4A football. This is the place to be. This will be the talk of the town till the end of the season. Honestly, till these teams maybe face each other later in the playoffs. Ball at the 25. First and 10. Anna will have their opportunity after this possession. Rushing Porter, he'll throw, and the pass is incomplete. And for a second there, you thought Grant Cervani may was able to steal that football. Not a lot of pressure coming from the left side by Brandon Green. That sets up second and ten. Forced him basically all the way to the sideline. Well, since the... Caleb Hill touchdown that tied the game in regulation. So far, nothing for the Bobcat offense yet. Hand off to Logan Gutierrez. He's got some space on the left side, and he is tackled. He'll get to the about the 18, 19 yard line, a gain of six. That'll set up a third down. Mason Davis broke through Caleb Hill's block, just got around him in order to stop that gain. Great play by Davis to stop Gutierrez's run. So this is third and four. The band going wild. The crowd going crazy. Snap. Given to Gutierrez. He's off to the races. He's in the end zone and a touchdown 
for Salina. Stopped him once, you couldn't stop him a second time as Gutierrez breaks free up the middle into the right, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Remember in the second overtime, you've got to go for two. Not over with yet, as Anna will have the ball after this. But we do have a timeout called by Salina. To really go over this, this two-point conversion that could be coming up here. Abram Greer always ha already has a interception on a two-point conversion this year. We saw it two weeks ago in their matchup versus the Aubrey Chaparrals. So we'll have to see if Greer can do that again or inspire one of his teammates to make that crucial stop. Thirty-six thirty, the score. So in the second possession, you have to go for two. Ball is at four yard line. It's looking like more of the same, more of the same. Gutierrez run, but we're stacking the tackle box. Six blockers in motion on the right side. Porter is being chased. He's on the run. He throws to a wide open receiver, Jacob Henry. And the two point conversion is successful. And Salina has taken an eight point lead here in overtime against Anna. Thirty-eight, thirty, and now Anna must score and must convert a two-point conversion to keep this game going. Twenty-five yards to do so. They've done it five, no, excuse me, four other times tonight. Touchdowns, none from none from this range. Basically, a red zone offense that they're running. Let's look at who has scored touchdowns for us tonight. You've got Steens, you've got Brett Poole. Man. 25 yard line, first and 10 for uh, the Coyotes in a do or die situation. Hand off to Chumley. Gains a pair, gains two yards. Met by Cooper Farrow for that early tackle. To make it second and eight. Palmer and Williams to the sideline. Poole and Bowen into the left. Second and eight. Snap back. Zai drifts back. Throws up the middle and just behind Chumley incomplete. Facing a third down so early and from almost a mid-range distance, just two yards from ten. A third and eight. Very, very tough. But if anybody can do it, it's the Santa offense. Third and eight. Two downs to get eight yards or more. Snap to Zai. Drops back, runs to his right. He'll throw and pass caught by Ronald Bell. First down, Anna. In the perfect spot, in the perfect spot. Excellent route running by Ronald Bell to yeah, get open on that sideline. Right at the 15. Yeah. So first and 10, ball spotted at the 15. And a new set of downs for Anna. And again, they must score and must convert a two-point conversion to keep this game going. Williams looked right, pulls it back, and he will step out of bounds. There was nothing going there as he will step out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage to make it second and ten. So second and ten, you go for gold, of course. Got to take a stab. Got to take a stab at the end zone. Second and ten, maybe try and get some yards, make the third down easier for you, or you go for two. And two, I mean the second attempt at a touchdown. 
Williams, quick throw to the right side, screen. Bell with the catch, has some space, drugged down finally, and then gained maybe a couple more thanks to a couple shoves there by his teammates. Lane White was one of them. It's third and three, ball at the eight. And again, if you get to the five-yard line, that's good enough for a new set of downs to make it what would be a first and goal. Got to go for it. Got to go for it. Definitely this run, this run getting that first down is the most important thing. Entire group huddle. This team is locked in, quickly getting into position. They run to the line. Williams with a quick snap. We've got a whistle flag, and it's a false start. They went too quick. So false start brings Anna back to a third and eight. And it's on Zach Roberson. So another penalty for Anna. So now third and eight, still two downs. So this third and a little bit more distance gives them some operating room to incorporate the pass game rather than it just being a run. Williams with some space, with some time. He's got to get rid of it. Throw to the end zone. It's knocked away. Pass was intended for Ronald Bell, and now fourth and eight. We have a flag down in the backfield. It might have been targeting. And now Lane White's thinking this is going against Salina. This is, this is a huge call here. Took heavy, heavy contact, really. Roughing the passer on Salina. And that's an automatic first down. And the ball spotted at the six yard line. All my eyes were on Bell. I did not see who made contact with Williams. Some divine intervention. So first in goal. And the ball is at the six. Hand off Chumley, runs to the right side. He's got some space. Chumley is into the end zone for the touchdown. Anna is within two. Great play by Chumley. Shook a tackle, shook another tackle. Got in there for that halfback stretch to the right, right in the end zone. So now they must convert this two-point conversion and tie the game. And again, yes, do or die situation. Anna has to convert this. And if not, we'll go to a third possession in overtime. Thirty-eight, thirty-six. What will be the play call? Seth Parr, right at the twenty-yard line, talking to his quarterback, Zai Williams. What will they draw up? Seems they have room for a timeout or they will take a delay of game. Timeout. Timeout. You get one every possession. Oh. Scoreboard has not updated that. Thank you for the recap. So they will take some time to talk things over. Anna must convert to keep playing. The offense... Edward Chumley scoring the touchdown here in overtime two after the roughing the passer penalty on Salina. Comes down to this. One play, although there have been hundreds of plays this game and throughout the previous games in the season and even the preseason and all those practices leading up to this one play in this highly anticipated rival. Everybody circled it with a fat red marker. This is why. This is why. Bell and Steens are the receivers. Chumley is to Williams' is right. You must convert to play on. Snap to Williams. He's going to take it himself. Did he get far enough? He 
No signal yet. It did. Yes. Williams did just enough, and we are playing on here in Salina. It is alive. There is a player down for Anna. He is being helped up. But Anna does its job to make it 38-38, and we will play overtime three. What a ball game here tonight. Zai Williams, we haven't seen many of those design plays here in this one. Not many designed half quarterback draws, and they pull one out there, and he did just enough to scramble across the goal line. Just right into the shotgun using Chumley as his blocker. Just said, hey, I'll be the running back now. I'm going. So everybody will reset as we will once again flip ends of the field back to the south end zone in a 38-38 game, overtime three. Both teams were unsuccessful in scoring in overtime one. And both teams converting touchdowns and the forced two-point conversion in overtime two. So everybody, including the students, will march back down to the other side. And now this time the Anna offense stays on the field, just like we saw in overtime one. It'll be the Bobcat defense who stays out there as Salina will have the possession after Anna pending whatever the result is. So minimal break, and now they have to go right back out there. We will most likely see more of the same. Oof, wow. Over time three, here we go. And the ball the is. Zy, the Zy Andre offense. Returns. Fourth down and. Oh, actually, so now, pardon me, it's two point conversion no matter what as we head into overtime three. Forgot Sorry. to mention that. We didn't break that to y'all, but. <clears throat> Williams there. And we got a flag thrown by the back judge. And a delay of game. Seth Parr would like an explanation. And now this we two point conversion that. is now a fourth is, and eight. Yeah, nearly. essentially. So big. Wow, a delay of game on that. That's yeah. this is this could be real costly here. So now you've got us. You've got to get in the end zone. Fake pitch to Bell. Pass. Oh, oh caught. Oh. Aiden wow. Palmer with the catch in the end zone puts Anna on top, 40 to 38. Palmer's been out there doing the dirty work running routes all night. He hasn't gotten much targets or much catches or any attention, but he rises up in the crunch time, giving us this two-point lead. First catch of the year for Aiden Palmer. And now if this Anna defense, and to convert from the eight-yard line there, if this Anna defense can come up with a stop here, they win this game. This crowd is loud. Anna getting everybody fired up. What will Solana draw up? We've got a timeout, Anna. We'll have to wait a few moments here. But as we're in overtime three, it's just simply if you can convert what is a two-point conversion. So both teams to huddle up here. Salina and Anna putting on so definitely earlier, a nominee for your game of the year in high school football. With their two-point conversion that they had the first time around, they set up with number eight, Jacob Henry, the wide receiver for Salina on the right side, put him in motion as a slot, and then he ran an out route to catch it just on the edge of the end zone. So you have to think that worked out so well. Will they go for that same play again? or spice it up with a Gutierrez run. And again, yes, as you mentioned, the running game is the focal point for the Solana offense, but how they tied the game was about a 70-yard pass. 
What will they do here on the two-point attempt? They must make it in to keep this game going. If not, Anna wins and stays unbeaten. Every fan is on their feet. Not one is sitting down. Ronnie Foreman is there as a running back as well. Porter with it. Drops back to the right side. Pressure coming. Here comes the throw and wide open catch is made by Logan Gutierrez. And we play on 40 to 40. So it was kind of both. It was Gutierrez, but it was a pass. We acted like they were two separate, undivisible. Oh, my that's a, goodness. That's a great play call by Bill Elliott and his coaching staff because all the attention was focused on the right side of the field, and there came Gutierrez out there wide open. Nobody had him. Because he, he had never gotten a reception. This game, really, it's once he doesn't get the ball, it's a pass. It's immediately a pass. And Yes, it was a pass, but it was still to him. Miscommunication on covering him on cover, excuse me, covering him on the left side. And a two point is good. So now OT the, number four. Now the Bobcat offense gets it again. Right, because they go back to back. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Number four. Well, they say the most important game in a seven-game series is a game four. We've seen everything tonight. You've been with us every step of the way. You've seen it too. Okay, here we go. And again, Anna will have a chance after this. OT number four, two-point conversion attempt here. Order to the right side. Catch made. Colton Rodriguez again. And it's 42 to 40, Solano leads. Rodriguez has officially redeemed himself. Wow, what a great, great catch by Rodriguez. And now it's Anna's offense turn, offensive turn once again, and they must convert to keep this game going. We saw in this scenario, a Z Zyandre Williams, quarterback draw to the right side the first time, what will we see this time? his offense getting everything lined up officials are telling them to get out there ready to go Williams Runs it himself. Going to take it himself. Tripped up, trying to force his way in. He stops short. Solana Bobcats knock off the Anaconda. Fourth overtime as Williams is unable to get into the end zone. And the Bobcats go to 4-0. and And the Coyotes fall to 2-1 and on the season. An overtime loss. Here in Salina, 42 to 40. Incredible effort that spanned more than an hour of in-game clock time, not even mentioning just actual time. Wow, great stuff. We'll be back. We'll wrap it all up when we return. Salina knocks off Anna tonight, 42-40 at Bobcat Stadium. Now through September, when you replace your existing system with a Goodman Complete System from Hutchins Plumbing and Air Conditioning, we'll replace your existing gas or electric water heater for free. That's right, free. You'll also receive a 10-year limited manufacturer's warranty on parts and a Hutchins 10-year labor warranty on your new system and water heater. This deal has been extended for one more month. Don't miss out. Call or go online today.
For 50 years, Texas Bank has helped families and businesses across our state. Whether you're opening a new totally free checking account or building your dream home, our Texas Bank family is excited to help you meet your goals. Come see our friendly staff in Anna and let us share our excitement with you about the next 50 years. Time to call Adon Complete. Our experienced techs come with a fully stocked truck, ready to help. If we don't have it in the truck, we can get it to your home within the hour. Every job reflects our name, and that's why we back our work with our one-year warranty. Cool off with Adon Complete Air Conditioning and Heating. Back to rack things up on uh, Coyote Vision. Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lowry, we have a final tonight. Salina overtime winners against Anna, 42 to 40. And I mean, quite honestly, any time a game goes into four overtimes, Nash, it's going to be a heck of a ball game. We saw some great efforts uh, by these individuals on both these teams here tonight. Tonight has been just truly special, really encompassing the full experience of high school football. Game went down to the wire. Four different overtimes, like you said, having to go tit for tat on two point on two point conversions. Really incredible stuff. I want to welcome you one last time up top here on the visitors coaches box here at Bobcat Stadium. Josh Sowers alongside Nash Lowry, and you know this is our third game into this uh, incredible what is already an incredible 2023 season. And uh, we saw, like I said, a heck of an effort tonight. And uh, their first loss of the season, Salina, they remain unbeaten. But something we saw tonight was just the passion, the energy uh, of this rivalry between these uh, two teams. I don't think Anna has anything to hold their hat on. Uh, this was a great effort by this team. And Salina, they got a big home win. Yeah, both teams really clawing hard and fighting hard. The grit was there. The effort, the effort was all there on both sides. The run game, the pass game, the defense, and the special teams hitting all of the cornerstones of a great football game. Yeah, you'll see a lot of these highlight plays as we go on throughout the week and especially on our next broadcast. Our next broadcast will be next Friday night. Another road game for these Anna Coyotes as they will head to Fort Worth. They'll go to Cowtown to take on Fort Worth All Saints Episcopal. 7.30 start. We will have down-to-down -down coverage on Coyote Vision. But, again, wrapping things up, we saw, again, third game for Zy Williams, sophomore starting quarterback, saw some great things, but definitely saw some things that he can improve on for sure. We saw a little bit more of the running game here for Anna. And, again, still missing Jacob Emmers. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. That could be the missing key cog to their offense. But, uh, overall, I think you just have to tip your hat to Salina. They, uh, they were able to sneak one out in the fourth overtime here tonight. Absolutely. The Anna offense and defense and special teams really did everything that they can, and you really can't fault them. It just came down to circumstances stance who could go blow for blow in the end it's the 12th round of a boxing fight and we just didn't come out with it tonight we'll be with you next friday night on coyote vision this was our first road broadcast on coyote vision we do appreciate you spending it with us for our entire crew for our fantastic students who made the trip over from anna here to bobcat stadium and for those students working back in the control room back in the high school we appreciate their help here tonight for foster naylor and for nash lowry i I'm Josh Sauer saying good night from Bobcat Stadium. Salina knocks off Anna 42-40. to We'll talk to everyone on Friday. Good night. Now through September, when you replace your existing system with a Goodman Complete System from Hutchins Plumbing and Air Conditioning, we'll replace your existing gas or electric water heater for free. That's right, free. You'll also receive a 10-year limited manufacturer's warranty on parts and a Hutchins 10-year labor warranty on your new system and water heater. This deal has been extended for one more month. Don't miss out. Call or go online today.
For 50 years, Texas Bank has helped families and businesses across our state. Whether you're opening a new totally free checking account or building your dream home, our Texas Bank family is excited to help you meet your goals. Come see our friendly staff in Anna and let us share our excitement with you about the next 50 years. Time to call Adon Complete. Our experienced techs come with a fully stocked truck, ready to help. If we don't have it in the truck, we can get it to your home within the hour. Every job reflects our name, and that's why we back our work with our one-year warranty. Cool off with Adon Complete Air Conditioning and Heating. 